There's a buzz in the air. The students back on campus this weekend. Jordan-Hare Stadium is sold out as today the Auburn Tigers and the Ole Miss Rebels meet in our Bell South SEC Game of the Week. It's the SEC opener for both of these teams. Good afternoon, everybody. Bob Kessling along with Dave Rowe. And what a terrific matchup it is today for two teams off to great starts. Auburn because of their outstanding quarterback, Damian Craig. Well, uh, Bob, he may be the most overlooked quarterback in the Southeastern Conference. He is unbelievable. Who could forget that big pass that he threw last year? 77-yarder out to Baker. And shades of it last week when he threw another 77-yarder to Karsten. He's got the ability to scramble. You see him here coming out of the pocket. And watch this. Just catches it right in stride. That's just tremendous quarterbacking. I like his leadership. I like his fire. And I like his desire. And I loved when he talked to you yesterday. Yeah, very athletic and just a guy that's very happy with how this thing has started as Auburn off to the 1-0 start with a win at Virginia uh, a week ago Thursday. Now, let's talk about their defense a little bit when the fact that Auburn has 10 starters back, but it's a defense that last year was last in the SEC. Well, it's tough for young players to learn a very difficult uh, system, and that's what the players are trying to do. But the strength of Auburn is in their linebackers. Takeo Spikes and Ricky Neal, the two inside linebackers, they lead this defense. They take control and they set the tempo. So now Ole Miss is a team, of course, now off probation or getting off probation. They can go to a bowl game this year, but their problem still, because of the probation, depth. Well, they do have depth problems. They can play pretty competitive on that first level. But the strength of this Ole Miss defense is also in the linebackers. And it's the linebackers you see there, Chucky Mullins nominee and the award winner, the big man Nate Wayne in the middle. He leads it. He, for them, sets the tempo on defense. So it's Ole Miss against Auburn. It's the SEC opener for both of these teams. And we'll have the kickoff when we come back to Auburn in just a moment. Today, Bell South SEC Game of the Week is brought to you by Bell South. Bell South is proud to be the official telecommunications partner of the SEC. By Nationwide Insurance. Check the yellow pages for the nationwide agent nearest you. And by Nations Bank. Here come the Ole Miss Rebels undefeated. They've defeated Central Florida and SMU coming into today's SEC opener form, but they're 0-7 all-time at Auburn. And here come the Tigers, fresh from that win against Virginia on a Thursday night. They are 1-0 as they come into today's matchup with Ole Miss. Another member of our broadcast crew is down on the field. Let's go now to Warren Pepper. All right, Bob, aside from the teams, a couple of players we want to look for this afternoon. John Avery for Ole Miss gets hurt in the first game. Doesn't even play last week because of a dislocated elbow. It's been heavily taped. He averaged in the last four games last year 110 yards a game. They're going to try to get him 15 to 20 snaps today. Karsten Bailey, the deep threat. Damian Craig can get the ball in the air and go long. He will be a factor today without question. The heat also a huge consideration. It's at 80 degrees listed. It's over 90 degrees on the field. Coach Bowden said he knows his players won't give in. He is concerned that they'll give out. That's true, Warren, because it is very, very humid. And really, neither of these teams, especially on this Dave, has a lot of depth. No, they really don't. Uh, Tommy Tuberville, of course, playing with uh, the numbers problems, but he's starting to build his unit. Terry Bowden, of course, has got numbers, but he has some thin spots, especially along defensive line. Jared Holmes to kick it off for the Auburn Tigers. You see the home openers. Auburn has won 18 straight. And dropping deep is Sheldon Morris. And Malikia Griffin for the Ole Miss Rebels. Glad you're with us today. Bob Kessling, Dave Rowe, Warren Pepper from Auburn. And we are set to go. Interesting, Bob. Ole Miss won the toss and took the ball. Just turned around and said, hey, we want to have the first shot at it. No breeze today to speak of, so it won't be a factor in the game. And Jared Holm, the senior from Clinton, Mississippi, kicks it off to the Rebels. Griffin will take it about five yards deep, and the Rebels will start at their own 20. And Stuart Patridge will lead the Rebels onto the field. The senior from Morgan City, Mississippi. Came out at the end of last season and emerged as the starter. He had a challenge in the spring by Robert Reed, but held him off, and Patridge gets the start. You see his numbers so far this year, the two touchdowns and the two interceptions. Boy, he has been outstanding, completing 68% of his passes. A lot of short little dinks and dumps. 
So the no huddle, John Avery is not in the starting lineup. Tony Canyon will be behind Stuart Patridge on a first and 10 at the Ole Miss 20. Now the pitch goes to Canyon. Gets a block and gets about five yards on first down. Terrence Metcalf leading the way. And here's the, the Nation's Bank starting lineups, and you see John Avery not in there. Yeah, that really hurts them to lose him. We thought he would come out and really take control and give them a real lift. And there's the lineman. Of course, Matt Luke, the big center. He's the returning starter. They've got a lot of uh, indecision there on their offensive line. A lot of young kids that uh, get a lot of playing time. Matt Luke, the junior, is the leader of that bunch. Patrick to the throw on second down. Oh, nice catch oh. on the sideline. Wow. Andre Roan makes the catch. Wow, what a catch that was. 17 yards on the catch. Now the Nation's Bank starting lineup, the defense for Auburn. Well, of course, led by Takeo Spikes. He's the leading Butkus candidate. They play a 3-4 defense, use a lot of people in the line. In their secondary, they made a move this week, an interesting move. They moved Houston from strong safety over to corner, moved Bray down and moved Rob Pate, a freshman, up to start at strong safety. Run in motion to the near side, and... Patrick hands it back to Canyon. Running strong to the weak side and has run out of bounds on a strong tackle by Rob Payne, but good change of direction by Canyon. Wow, that play was designed to go odd to the left. It was going to go, it was a sweep to the outside. They pulled both the guard and the tackle. You're going to see both sweeps this way. They change direction. Watch him plant right here now. Come back, and then all of a sudden he dips all the way back to the outside. That's a tremendous cut and great vision by Canyon. Bill Oliver, the defensive coordinator for the Auburn Tigers in the middle. Trying to figure out a way to stop this Ole Miss team. They'll give you a lot of different looks, Dave, a lot of different formations. Yes, they will. Pitch back to Canyon. They got him on the boundary this time. They're going to lose a yard on that play. Leonardo Carson comes up to make the stop for the Tigers, and they really like him. Oh, they really do. And Carson's one of those fast guys. He was a high school quarterback. Can you imagine that? He's now 272 pounds. He runs the line well. And one of the things about Auburn Tigers, their defense, you never see them get knocked down. They slide. They play off blocks just slide along the line. It's going to be hard to beat them to the outside unless they have somebody with, like with John Avery with his great speed. Loss of a yard on the play. And Ole Miss goes to the three wide receivers for the first time in the eye backfield. Darling, that's Deuce McAllister. Again, stopped short of the line of scrimmage, and Ricky Neal comes up from his linebacking spot to put him down. Boy, and Ware was in there, too. Man, Ware, he, he really stuck him at the tail end. Ricky Neal slides over. He's number 50. He's a middle inside linebacker. But watch the stick at the tail end of the play when Ware comes up. Bam! They just drop him. There's Neal 50, Ware 27. And Neal's kind of, Neal doesn't get much publicity with uh, Takeo Spikes back there. Patrick's in a throwing situation here. Third and a long 11. Patrick's going to throw it over the middle and he overshoots his man. Ole Miss breaking free was the tight end, Rufus French, but Patridge couldn't get it to him. And so Ole Miss now has a decision, a long field goal, probably too long, and now they'll send the punting unit in. Well, this is one of those downs that you hate to give up the football because you're not really in four, four down territory. A field goal from here would be, oh, what, 62 yards, just a little bit too far. So now you try to pooch kick it. Kick it to the boundary, kick it inside the 10, 15 yard line. Reagan King, the pooch punter, is into the game. Markeith Cooper is back for Auburn. Let's it bounce, and oh. it bounces inside the five-yard line. What a terrific kick by Reagan King, and Markeith Cooper made a mistake on that one. Yes, he did. He, he signaled for fair catch. He probably should have come up and caught it. What they do is they teach you to catch it. Ten-yard lines, don't back up. Catch it in front of That's one he wishes he had a, a chance to catch over. 39 yards on the punt, but the position of it is the big thing. Auburn pinned back to its five-yard line as the Tigers get the ball for the first time. Scoreless here in the first quarter at Auburn. Damian Craig brings the Tigers out for the first time. Last year, he led them to a victory over Ole Miss, 45-28 with three touchdown passes. 
you see his career numbers and pretty impressive. Well, they really are pretty impressive. Interesting. I saw when he bent down there, the orange, uh, remember the orange uh, sweatpants he told you he was going to wear? <laughs> He's got them on, Bob. Well, this is great field position for Ole Miss. This is exactly what you have to do. You have to give, make them drive a long way if you want to stick in this football game. And off to the tailback. Rusty Williams gets the start, bowls over the 10-yard line. Good first play for the Tigers, and you see the Nation's Bank starting lineup for the Tigers' offense. Boy, we talked about the deep threat, Karsten Bailey. He can really flat out go after the ball. He's averaging 38 yards a catch. They're solid all the way across there. It's a young offensive line, a couple sophomores and a freshman mixed in there, but it's really led by Victor Riley, the big guy who's had a real attitude change this season. In fact, he was kicked off the team in the spring yeah. and is back on now. Again, Rusty Williams spins his way across the 15, but he's going to be short of a first down. There's a look at the Nation's Bank starting lineup for the Rebel defense. Well, Michael Boone really is a, he's one of the real keys. He has got to play well and inside. Very versatile player you see plays on the basketball team. The linebackers are led by Nate Wayne. He's the Chucky Mullins award winner. They wear that number 38 for the outstanding defensive player. And this secondary is a strong secondary. Timothy Strickland had a good game last week, nine tackles. But it's a it's a good, solid, not outstanding in, in, in terms of like preseason All-Americans, but very, very good and solid defensive secondary. Couple of tight ends on third and short, and Craig will take it himself. Just rides behind his center. T.J. Dunnigan to get the first down, and the Tigers have pushed it out from their five. I wondered if he just fell down. There was nobody touched him. Watch this. he got a hole in the middle. The center's got to stay up. Look, nobody touches him. He just says, I got first down. <laughs> Quarterbacks are taught to get down, and Craig did that time. He was the MVP in the Independence Bowl win for the Tigers. Bob, I really, I really enjoyed listening to him talk with you, uh, you and him talk yesterday. I just thought he was in total control, and the questions you asked him were just great questions, and he just came right back with some good answers. He's a very confident young man. He's not worried about individual goals or records he wants to win. Throw out Goodson, trying to get open, and he's got it. They say they're going to motion. He was inbounds at the 45-yard line. Great catch by Tyrone Goodson. Boy, that was. This is press man coverage where the defensive back turns his back, and that's Griffin. He's a good cornerback. Watch to the left of your screen. Now see if he gets that foot down when he catches it. There's the ball caught. Foot down. Yes. Yeah, Boy, catch. that's an outstanding. Look at the official right in position to make that call. That was a tough one. I was almost going to say he didn't come down with the feet inbounds. Griffin almost wrestled it away from him, too. Again, remember, the defensive back can push you out of bounds, and it's not a catch. You've got to come down yourself inbounds in college football. First carry up the middle for Fred Beasley, and he pulls his way out to midfield. When the big guys up front are starting to take control, you see Victor Riley that we talked about. He's the big man in there, 6'5", 313, drive blocks off the line. Demarcus Curry is another one, the guard, and, of course, Dunnigan, the center. Big men driving off the ball. Morris Scott makes the stop for Ole Miss. And the one thing, Dave, Auburn has this Ole Miss defensive line outweighed by about 50 pounds a man. Yeah, that really wears on you. The, longest, the longer that game goes, the more it wears on you. Scoreless game. Auburn coming off its own five-yard line. They made it out to midfield. And Rusty Williams has a hole over the left side. Takes it down to the 45-yard line. Williams didn't get to play that much against Virginia, but he's gotten the start today, and he's looked very sharp. Boy, what a lead block by 23 Beasley. He's just going to come busting right through and get the middle backer, number 50, 38. Just bam, he gets him, and then, then he's off just off to the running. Again, that's Williams. But again, watch that block. See 23 in there? He just ties up the linebacker. Timothy Strickland has to come up from his free safety spot to make the stop, and it's another first down for Auburn. Oh. Now movement. And that's Damian Craig at his best. Confidence quarterback comes in there, changes the snap count a little bit. He's probably gone on two several times. All of a sudden he comes in and emphasizes that second count, and he gets Baker to jump off sides. Dead ball foul. Offside. Defense. Five yard penalty. Dick Burleson with the call. There's the rest of his crew. The Channel Lane Thomas, Len Harrington. George Schubert, Richard Morales, and Harold Mitchell. 
We're at Auburn, scoreless first quarter, but the Tigers on the drive now to the Ole Miss 35-yard line, and again the Rebels jump. Oh, did you see what did you see what Dunnigan did that time? When he saw one of the players jump into the neutral zone, he snapped the ball. Heads up play by the center. Mitch Baker comes across and hits Dunnigan. Dunnigan, of course, moved there really during two-a-day camps. They've had a couple of centers, one injured, Carl Levine, one quit the team. So Dunnigan and dead ball foul. Side, defense, five-yard penalty, first down. Now watch, this is not going to be snapped, but watch Baker jump. He's going to jump into the gap. You see the emphasis of the snap count. He jumps in, he's in that neutral, snap it right now. See, none of the other linemen move. They don't know it. They're waiting for it to go on three or four or whatever the count was. Heads up play. So again, now it's a first down at the 30-yard line. It's an audible. Pitch back to Williams, breaks one tackle, breaks a couple and drags some Rebels with him down to the 25-yard line. Derek Burgess hanging on, and Ronnie Hurd also comes up from the safety spot to make the top tackle. Well, you know, we talked a lot about Damian Craig and his leadership. I like him. I'm telling you right now, I just like a lot of things. Talked about him being overlooked in the SEC, and he really is. But he's taking this team now from, what, the five-yard line? He's driven them the length of the field. Great ball control, good concept of the game. And on the drive, Rusty Williams, four carries for 24. Damian Craig hadn't thrown the ball much on this drive. The one catch to Goodson. And again, Williams. Not much there this time as Ole Miss comes up and squeezes him and knocks him down. Yeah, they stepped up in the line there, and they stopped that lead block by the fullback, and then he had to bust outside. Walker Jones comes up with a help on the play from Johnny Jones. Yeah, Johnny Jones to the outside here. See, bust outside, and you're not going to get it out there because they got good containment with Walker Jones, number 29, out there. So the Tigers have a key third down play to keep the drive alive. So far on the drive, one of one on third down conversions, and Damian Craig goes to the gun. Swings it out. Marquis Cooper. He's got a first down on the 20-yard line. A little extra effort. I think he's got the first down. Dave, he's going to be close. Sure was. He had big Geno James, number 70 out, eight out there leading him. He may come down just a little bit yeah, short. I think you're right. He didn't get a good mark. This was, this was a good block also by the wide receivers out there. You know, a lot of times wide receivers don't get credit for blocking. But look right here. They tie him up out there. One takes inside. Now watch Geno right there. Boom. He just... He just levels them, but a good block there. Well, Terry Bowden sent in a statement out here. It's fourth and short, less than a yard, and the Tigers going to go for it. Well, they tried that quarterback sneak last time. I can't imagine him leaving that open. Craig does it again. Gets a big push from the middle of that Auburn line to Marcus Curry, T.J. Mears, and T.J. Dunnigan. Pushing well, Craig for the first down. First down, Tigers inside the almost 20. Well, just when I said he wouldn't do it, he goes right back to it. But if you're going to leave that center uncovered, that's a good call because they only had to make less than a foot. So he just squeezes ahead. But, uh, boy, I like Damian Craig. I like his leadership. I like his play calling. And, you know, we talked yesterday about him and what, what his strong points were. They talked about sight adjustments. And we'll look at that during the game. That's where you're able to look and see what that, the depth of the defense is and pick out the hot wide receiver. And Kate Pennington into the game now for the Tigers at tailback. He's in motion to the upper part of your screen. And Beasley gets the handoff. Bangs his way to the 10, inside the 10. Close to another first down. Well, Nate Wayne has got to get off his block. He's got to slide. We talked about him being the big man in the middle. He has got to be able to pick it. You see him right in the middle there. He's got to be able to slide. See right there? Now he hits him from the side. And that's an arm tackle. Coaches will tell you to get your head in front of him. In other words, don't reach for him. Move to him. He's going to be short of the first down. So second and two. And again, the Tigers with their third tailback of this drive, Pennington. But Beasley gets it up the middle. He'll be close to a first down. Now this is where it gets tough to run because what you do is you have a bat you have another defender and that's the back of the end zone so you don't have to cover as deep your ba your backers and your defensive secondary are closer to the line they can recover quicker on the run andre harrison and brock kreitz make the stop and that's going to be very close to the first down but it's going to be third and short 
Not another quarterback sneak, Bob. You got it. He's pushed oh. back this time. And I think they I heard think him. he made it. I don't I, think he made it. Yeah, I think they heard him. Johnny Jones pushing him back along with Mitch Baker. I think that's what they said in the defensive huddle. Not another quarterback sneak. And they stuffed him this time. Watch in the middle right there. Boom, they just stuff him. And you can see he's got nowhere to go. I don't think he was even close. No. Now the Tigers have another decision. They're going to go for it again. Bring an extra tight end into the game. Kevin McLeod. And now they want to talk about it. So the Tigers have converted on short yardage situations, but this time they want to talk about it as they're inside the Ole Miss 10 in a scoreless game with 4.35 to go in the first quarter. We'll look at Terry Bounds' decision when we come back with first a word from your local SEC stations. Terry Bounds has made the decision. They're going to try and kick a field goal. Jaron Holmes comes in. And you see his career. Jeremy Zills to hold it. This will be a 25-yard field goal by Jared Holmes. And the kick is good. Now the Tigers take a 3-0 lead. I think that Ole Miss has to feel pretty good about it. Well, I think they do, too. I think what happened is Terry Bowden said, hey, we've just driven the ball 80-some yards. We're not going to leave this with no score. 14 plays on the Auburn scoring drive. And the Tigers with 4.31 to go on the first lead all miss, three to nothing. Next Saturday, Danny Ford and the Arkansas Razorbacks head to Tuscaloosa to take on Alabama. Last time they were in Tuscaloosa, remember Barry Lunny's pass to J.J. Metters as the Hogs shocked the Crimson Tide. Tune in next Saturday to see how the return trip ends up. Check your local listings for the Jefferson Pilot Sports Station in your area. Auburn leads here three nothing. Long touchdown, drive potential, stuffed out by the Rebels as they hold inside their own 10. And now the Rebels get the ball back, trailing 3-0. Jared Holmes to kick off. Larry Casher and Malika Griffin are deep for the Rebels. Casher gets the kick and brings it back the middle of the field. He's got some running room. Nice move to the outside and dragged down at the 32-yard line. Seneca Pennington makes the stop for Auburn. Ole Miss gets the ball. Let's go down to Warren Pepper. Bob, one of the things, if you're an Auburn fan, you say, what is it that kind of remotely looks familiar about these guys this year? They're wearing black shoes for the first time since their 11-0 season of 93. It was a vote taken by the team. Coach Bowden wasn't in favor of it because he thinks they make you look slower. <laughs> but he said, if that's what they want, it worked in 93, that's what we'll do. That's right, Dave, you wore oh. black shoes. You didn't look that slow, did you? Well, you know what? I actually was one of the few players that wore black shoes when everybody else wore white because I knew white shoes wouldn't even make me look fast. Rebels trying to get something going here offensively, trailing 3-0. Again, the handoff right up the middle goes to Tony Canyon. Junior out of Melbourne, Florida. He's been the workhorse so far. And Romero Miller now into the game for Ole Miss. Highly regarded freshman quarterback. First playing time for Ole Miss. And you see his high school numbers. Remarkable. Okay. Over 9,000 yards and 89 year touchdowns. Passing. When they say he has a tight spiral, spiral, he's got a great strength in his arm. The only thing he needs is playing time. And evidently, Tommy Tuberville says, we're going to get him some playing time when the game is on the line early. He says Patrick, of course, is still the starting quarterback, the number one guy, but he wants to get Romero into the game because he's their quarterback of the future. He's in trouble. Pass is incomplete. Showed some pretty good quick feet there. Leonardo Carson chasing him down. And Jimmy Brumbaugh also back there for Auburn. Yeah, a much different quarterback than Patrick. But watch this. He has a lot of confidence back here. He knows he can move around. Right here, he's in trouble, right? He just scoots away. Now he throws it underneath. Fortunately, it was incomplete. But he reminds me a little bit of that movement of a Damian type Craig type of uh, quarterback. He one time went to the Bowden quarterback camps, but the recruiting battle was won by Tommy Tuberville. Marcus Washington was also back there on the last play for Auburn. Now the Rebels show four wide receivers for the first time. And the quick snap to the up back. That's Robert Reed. And nothing going. So on third down and five, they sneak Robert Reed 
who usually plays H back back to the quarterback spot. Yeah, Bob, that was going to be that shuffle pass underneath. He was going to throw the ball right here, but you'll see what happens right there. He's going to throw it underneath now. He doesn't pick up the blocks. Now he's just got to ad lib and make something on his own. He does. He gets back. He gets a couple yards, but really that was uh, just a broken play at the line of scrimmage. They were trying to get it to Rufus French, the tight end, but it didn't work. Markeith Cooper is back for Auburn. Another fake punt. Again, it's Reed. He's at midfield. And down to the 30-yard line of Auburn. All this with a fake punt, and it works to perfection. 30 yards. Boy, that was a heck of a call for, by Tommy Tuberville. What they do is they snap it short to the up back to actually like the wing. And you'll see what happens right here. Outside here, they, 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 he comes right up through that hole right there. You'll see the outside rush up, doesn't even see the snap. Now Reed is off to the races. He only has one person to beat, and it's number 42, one of the, one of the down linemen. He picks up a big play. Now this has got to give Ole Miss some enthusiasm. What a weapon Robert Reed is. He went to Tommy Tuberville in the spring and said, I don't think I'm going to win the quarterback bottle. I want to play. They drink, go back to Stuart Patrick's now in the game of quarterback. To so the third rebel quarterback of the drive. And Canyon on the move. Can't get outside. Great defense by the Tigers. And who else? Takiya Spikes. Oh, boy. Spikes just pushed down one guy and occupied about three. He was not to be denied. You were not going to beat him outside very very strong you see the strength of his arms look right here they've got him there they've got him to the outside he's not gonna be denied and look at that he just holds on there you know Grant Hurd though it looked like he pulled up didn't want to yeah. get a clipping call well I think he did I think probably they should have cut back underneath spikes there he is the Butkus award nominee he was also nominated last year second down long Patrick got time to throw this time and launches oh. one too far he had Sheldon Morris behind the Auburn defense, but overshot him. Wow, all he had to do was lead Sheldon Morris across the middle, and he had touchdown written all over that play. He just he just misread it. He was under pressure, but watch Morris come into your screen. 86, he's wide open. You see, bang, he gets hit right there. But Morris was wide open across the middle. Boy, that was tough. Big down right here. A lot of times they like to go to their uh, big tight end, Rufus French, in this situation. Third down. In a 3 nothing game, Auburn leads. Ole Miss trying to get on the scoreboard. Patrick. Pressure and drops. He made it back to the line of scrimmage, but Auburn just collapsed around him. Quentin Reese and Jeff Dunlap in. Well, Patrick did not want to force the ball into coverage right here, and it was good. This is what you call a secondary sack. The secondary is covering so well. Look at the time he has. Time, time, time. Now he's just got nowhere to go. They collapsed the pile around him. But really, that was uh, that was a good heads-up play by Patrick not to force the ball into. And you can see right there, that's uh, Bill Oliver right there. That man right there. That's. He's the defensive guru, I guess you'd call him. 52-yard field goal. Steve Lindsay comes on to attempt, and now flags everywhere. Steve Lindsay is two of six on his field goal attempts this year, and Auburn has taken its second timeout of the first half. It comes with 50 seconds to go, and Auburn leading 3 nothing. but the Rebels have a chance for the long field goal. Well, this is a big try, because uh, if you come back in here and you, you just run a trick play, you take a lot of momentum away from a team when you run a trick play, and that's what Ole Miss has been able to do. They ran that fake punt. They really have been outplayed so far in this first period, this first quarter of the football game, but they have a chance to tie it, so uh, this is a heck of a play. I mean, this is a big situation. A long field goal try. You know, Tuberville's done a terrific job. He's 13 and 11 now in his three years at Ole Miss. They won their first game 24-23 over Central Florida in an overtime matchup. And then they beat SMU 23-15. For the first time now, since the probation, the Rebels can go to a bowl game, and that's something, Dave, they've really talked and stressed a lot about. This yeah, year. they really have. They are really excited about that. That's what they're shooting for this year. They feel that if they get a chance, they want to play in the bowl. Terry Bowden, of course, last year the Tigers won 8-4, had a win against Army in the Independence Bowl. And now, Ole Miss 
comes back out. Steve Lindsay on to attempt. It'll be a 52-yard field goal, his longest in his career is 50. Got lots of leg on it. Wow. Plenty of leg. And we're tied at three. 52-yard field goal by Steve Lindsay. And Bob, I could hear that come off his foot. That was a boot. That thing cleared the goalpost at about 15 feet. That wasn't close. Well, he was one for five kicking in the first game on field goal attempts, and this has got to be a big morale boost to him and the Ole Miss team. I mean, that came off his foot like a rocket. That's what a, every kicker dreams of getting. And look at that. The hands go up right away. He knew it. Look how high that ball was when it went into the stands. He knew it all the way. Yeah. Well, the minute it came off his foot, everybody looked up and just went, wow. We're, we're 50 yards away. I can hear that pop come off his foot. So 3-3 three, three, with 44 seconds to go in the first quarter. Ole Miss has had the ball twice. Auburn has had it once and a rapidly played first quarter. Boy, it has been quick. And virtually, Ole Miss has had very, very little offense, but they're in this football game 3-3 three three by trickery and by a whale of a field goal. That was a great fake punt call, wasn't it? Yeah, that, really, that, takes a lot of, that takes a lot of courage to do that because you don't want to give Auburn tries, and you don't want to give them good field position. So Steve Lindsay, the senior out of Hattiesburg, Mississippi, who just kicked the field goal, will kick it off, and Markeith Cooper is deep for Auburn. for breakfast. I'm telling you what. That thing went sailing out of the end zone. Stay tuned at halftime for our Bell South You Call the Play feature. A look at a big call from SEC Games Past. Damian Craig to lead his Tigers back onto the field in a 3-3 game. And Bob, when you look up and see a kicker kick like that, first thing you do is look at the flag. Flag's hanging straight yeah. down. There's he, no win. He got no benefit at all on that deal. I don't know what they're feeding him over there on the <laughs> sideline, but keep pumping it into him. That's right. Most times you just leave those kickers alone when they're doing well. Don't try to coach him. Heck, Lindsey might want to go and play linebacker right now, <laughs> as jacked up as he is. Tigers start at their own 20. Craig now going to air it out a bit. The out pattern. It was there, but it was broken up. Nice play by Gary Thigpen. I saw Thigpen just get a hand in there and just swatted that football. That was a well-thrown ball. Quick out, about eight, nine yards. You're going to see drive off the ball. This is press coverage where the back, defensive back turns his back. Now he's just playing the man, and look at the last second. He doesn't put his hand on him, just gets in there and just swats that ball away. That's pretty good defense on yes. Carston Bailey, isn't it? And then you see the Auburn or Ole Miss brain trust upstairs. Well, they got to be happy right now. In this football game, they've not played well on offense. They've not driven the football. Again, Damian Craig goes to the shotgun. On second and ten, pressure. Craig skips out of there and turns nothing into about a four-yard game. And that's what the Ole Miss coaching staff was talking about, how dangerous he is. Yeah, you have to have controlled rush when you rush a quarterback that's as mobile as Damian Craig. You've got to be able to, another one. I say controlled rush, you've got to have your two ends go upfield. They box him in so he can't flush to the outside. Then you have your defensive tackles rush up the middle and collapse the box. Our biggest spearman made the stop for Ole Miss as the first quarter is coming to an end. A couple of field goals as Auburn and Ole Miss are tied 3-3 in our Bell South SEC Game of the Week. Second quarter from Auburn coming up. Three-three is our score as we start playing the second quarter. Damian Craig, of course, not nominated for the Davy O'Brien Award this year, but he said that doesn't bother him at all. Sir, I'm worried about Auburn. I'm worried about winning because the war doesn't really mean anything. You can't share an award with your teammates. Um, if I win that award, it's something that I can't share with my teammates, but a SEC championship or a national championship is something that we can all share and something that our fans can get involved in also. Davey O'Brien award, of course, goes to the nation's top senior quarterback. You see Craig's numbers today, two of three for 30 yards. Big play here, though, third and long. Auburn backed up in their own territory. 
three wideouts for the Tigers. And Gray going to throw it. Hit as he throws. Great catch. That'll be a first down for Auburn. Hicks four goes up high to pull it down. Boy, and Griffin was in great position on the play, but what a great job of concentration by Hicks four to go high for the football. Pressure from the back side, from the front side. Left of your screen, you're going to see it coming in late. Watch Craig hold in there. Bam, he's going to get hit. Now there's Poor up the top. Comes in here and you're going to see him. Watch him go high for the ball. Now look right there. Griffin just flashes right in front of him. The top of his leap. The ball is right there. That is an outstanding play. Griffin's only 5'8". If he was about 6'2", he might have intercepted that one. And off up the middle. Beasley banging his way. Gets across the 40 and shoved back. Beasley, of course, has gone back and forth between tailback and fullback. Now starting for the Tigers at the fullback spot. First quarter stats. Everything's pretty much even. It's not, it's not bad. Big play is obviously. The big play is that 30-yard rush off the fake punt by Reed. That really set up. Uh, that was a huge play. That really was. That was, that was about most of their offense. Beasley goes out of the game. And Mark Heath Cooper is back in. Damian Craig again, second and long. Craig looking, fires, got his man again at 6-4. And he's going to be close to a first down. Poor just keeps on wearing out that corner over there. He's playing in the seam. That time Ole Miss decided that they, that they would not rush four men. They just rushed three men. You're going to see. Watch Craig. As he steps back here, he's going to step right there. He's going to look right there for the pass. And you're going to see it just drive a strike. Bang! Right there. You see how he just curled right in the center of that little zone defense? If you're going to let Damian Craig have that much time to look downfield, he's going to eat you alive. Seventh first down of the game for Auburn. They've got it right. A yard into Ole Miss territory. Hand off. Cooper picks his way, but only a yard. Tried to jitterbug in there, but Nate Wayne was there to make sure he didn't get away, along with Brock Kreitz. Dave, these are three impressive linebackers for Ole Miss. They're smart. They're good. They don't make many mistakes. Yes, they are. They really are good. Wayne and, of course, Walker and Kreitz, they move the football well. They, they slide along the line. They're the strength of this defense. And it's interesting, each one of them complements the other one because Walker and Kreitz are the outside upfield men, and Nate Wayne is the big man in the middle, slide and plug the holes. Second and eight, Craig DeRoll. Fires on the move, but off balance that time. Now the ball sails out of bounds. It was intended for Tyron Goodson, but it was way over his head. Craig said, told us yesterday, Dave, when we were talking to him, he's been bothered a little bit in the last six months or so with tendonitis but he's learning to take care of his arm and that's his most valuable asset and yeah what happens to a quarterback it's right in the elbow quarterbacks get sore elbows and a lot of times you'll see him go over to the sideline some of them wear sleeves to try to keep that arm warm other ones will come over and they ice it down trying to keep it from uh, from any uh, tendonitis or inflammation in it Craig four for six through the air two of four now Auburn is on third down conversions they have one right now near midfield Gold Miss needs to come and get them here they come, Spearman running him down, can't catch him, quick feet, and he fires, no, incomplete, incomplete intended for his tight end Tyrone Dillard, oh. I think Craig could have won a dance contest back there <laughs> that right time. Now. Boy, does he freeze the defensive lineman in the linebacker's rush. Watch right here. He just freezes him. Right there. He's caught. Right in the look. Back. Forward. Back. Now. Slide. Look at all the linemen. And those, now those are backers, too. That's Walker Jones, 29, running after. And look at this. He lays it right out there, just falling away. He's not able to come down with the football, just falling away. But gosh, knows is Damian Craig mobile. Andre Rowe now drops back for Ole Miss to get the punt on fourth down and eight. Good kick. Turns over. Now that ball is going to die at the three-yard line and roll back to the five. We've seen some terrific punting in this game. Jared Holmes that time. The pooch downed inside the 10-yard line, 42 yards on the kick by the Auburn senior. Well, that was outstanding. Anytime you can get a ball to turn over like that and nose, watch the ball just die. I mean, it hits on about the three-yard line. Bang, right there, and it just kind of comes back. 
Just a perfect punt. You just want that ball just to stick in that grass. Well, if you get a sandwich to work oh. like that, you'd be on the PGA Tour, wouldn't you? Well, I played with a great punter, Ray Guy, and he could do that. And he told me the secret is to get the ball to turn over so it doesn't roll end over end, but it spikes into the ground with the nose. And that's exactly what uh, he did that time. So the Rebels are backed up with their five. Auburn had this position in the first quarter and took the length of the field for a field goal. Now the Rebels try. The out pass, misconnection. They try to get it to Roan. The Arizona bit behind him. Coverage over there by Martavius Houston. Now one of the problems that Auburn puts on you in this situation is you've got to go to max pass protection. You've got to keep your backs in. You've got to keep your tight end in. And you can only send two guys out for the wideouts for the pass pattern. Now when you do that, they have great coverage. So it's, it's kind of a cat and mouse game. But you've got to stay in max coverage protection back here. And the Rebels, of course, have been juggling their offensive line a little bit, trying to get some stability up there. And off second man, Thune McAllister, tripped up as he gets across the line of scrimmage. And then you see John Avery. They looked at him in pregame warm-ups. Dave, I guess they just decided he couldn't go. Not well, worth the risk. Yeah, what, what they did to that elbow is they taped that elbow. He hyperextended his elbow. So they taped it so it would not fully extend. Then they put a hockey kind of a hockey guard on the back side. You can see how bulky it is. And I can tell you this, uh, knowing John Avery, there's nobody who would like to be in this football game more than him. Little guy, but he's got about 10-pound heart. He's a difference maker. The Rebels could use him today. Patrick's on the roll. Throws it complete. Got his man. And there's Robert Reed again. Big play. First down Ole Miss. Boy, that was close to it. He, he saw the marker on the ground, and he kicked the marker. I wondered if he kicked the marker and made the first down. Or if he comes up short, this could be a huge pay. I think where the mark is, I think he was able to get it. Yeah, Ricky Neal comes out here. He's right in Patrick's face. But again, he had to make that. He had to make about the 11 and a half yard line. Well, they marked it up. They didn't even measure it. Yeah, I thought he had it. He got past the 11. Yeah. That's a first down. So good play again by Robert Reed. Tommy Tuberville said they got to get him the ball. Now they've done so so far in this first half. Again, we're tied 3-3 with 11.33 to go. Patridge again, the out pass. This time it was fullback. Eli Ending makes the catch and knocked out of bounds by Ricky Neal. Yeah, that, this is just short passing game. This is what they did. They dinked him to death in the first two games. That time there was a little missed tackle in there by the two safety in the corner. But uh, again, he picks up good yardage. And that's exactly what they want to do, just dink them. You saw all chop blocks on the line, get those linemen to get their hands down, dunk the ball just four, five, six yards, just keep control of the clock. Stuart Patrick's three of six now for 31 yards. First down play, McAllister just booms his way across the 25-yard line. The freshman out of Morton, Mississippi. He has been a pleasant addition to this Ole Miss running attack. Well, you know, when you talk about intensity, look at that. Look at the eyes of Spikes. He slides, he comes back inside, sticks him, comes off, plays off his block so well. And look at that form tackling. Young kids, when you want to tackle, that's the way you want to do it. You stay up, you look him right in the face, you tackle him, you wrap those arms up. I like talking with him yesterday. He was a lot of fun. Likes to play the game, doesn't he? Yes, he does. I said, are you having fun? He said, I love it. Another first down. So again, the Rebels have come off their own five-yard line. Bill Oliver, of course, met, spent some time with him yesterday talking about the fact he's got 10 players returning, but he just doesn't have a lot of flexibility up front, especially. Doesn't have a lot of depth. Yeah, they just they don't switch players a lot. They ask a lot of their front three linemen. And a lot of times you'll find out when you play a 3-4 defense, a lot of times it's because of personnel. You just don't have a lot of depth to play four and five defensive linemen, so you have to play linebackers. Shannon Settle is into the game for Auburn at left tackle now. Played five snaps against Virginia, but in there now is Auburn trying to rotate some folks. McAllister nowhere to go. Ricky Neal stands him up and drives him back. Fifth stop of the day already for Ricky Neal. He got some help. Jimmy Brumbaugh came in there and cleaned it up, but it was Neal who met him first, and there's a flag down. Boy, and if you're if you're an offense, you hate this because it's a flag. It's probably going to be holding against Ole Miss from where it was thrown. Yeah, that's the signal. Now they have the, the decision here is do you take them far back? They had a loss on the play. They lost about four yards, so it'll be second down at about 14, or do you walk them on back? Ole Miss has really been a pretty disciplined football team. Not a lot of penalties. This is a big decision now for Auburn. Do you want to back them up or take the play? 
We have holding against the offense. Penalty is declined. Second down. And that's a good answer. They lost, they gained, the defense gained four yards on the play. They dropped them for about four yard loss, so don't let them have another chance. You know, it's one of the things that Terry Bowden says, every time I look at a game like this, we play Ole Miss, it's like they have the ball most of the time. We just don't get our shots. Auburn now going to five defensive backs. They bring Larry Cash with a freshman into the game. He's playing this corner on the near side. Patrick trying to slip screen to Robert Reed. He's got it, but he stopped after a pick of about three yards. Bartavius Houston snuffed it out and made the stop. Boy, and Houston played right through the block. Good pressure there by the outside backer, Taylor, number six. But they, he just played right through the block. He played through the block and again tackled him. That's what you want him to do. Of course, Houston moved over to that corner spot coming from free safety. I'm sure uh, Brother Oliver told him, listen, we need to find out where Mr. Reed is and make sure he's not going to make any more plays. So exactly. Houston was right on top of him. Third down and long. It's going to be third and 12 for Ole Miss. Backed up at their own 25. One thing Patrick does not want to do is force the ball into trouble. Look for Rufus French here. See if he can get open. That's who they're throwing to. But he was covered nicely by Rob Pate. He was looking for French, who has been their third down go-to guy. But Pate did a terrific job, and he's just a freshman, too. What happened that time is French did not get a chance to make his move. As he made his move, the ball was there because, again, Auburn elected to come after him. Came after him with good quarterback pressure, collapsed the pocket, and Patrick had to throw it early. Reagan King back in to punt. Markeith Cooper dropping deep for the Auburn Tigers. Auburn should get very good field position out of this one. Good high kick. Cooper going to take a fair catch at his own 35-yard line. 40-yard kick for the Auburn Tigers. So Ole Miss will have it when they come back. 9.19 to go. Sundrench Jordan Harris Stadium. 3-3 game between Auburn and Ole Miss. Back at Auburn. 9.19 to go. Second quarter. Auburn and Ole Miss tied at 3 all. Bob Kessler, Dave Rowe, Warren Pepper down on the field. Been a hard knock at SEC football game. Boy, it's been a great SEC football game. Surprised that Ole Miss with a little bit of trickery has stayed in this football game. They haven't had the ball a whole lot, but they've been productive when they've, when they've had it. And they've really surprised, I think, Auburn in this first quarter. They wait in the Rebels hanging in there against Damian Craig and the Tigers. First and ten. Auburn. Rusty Williams back into the game at tailback, running over folks across the 40, but there is a flag down. Yeah, late flag thrown way out here on the outside, and that's almost always holding. I mean, you know, flags are just thrown in different areas, and you just get the feeling of what they're going to be. We'll have to wait, though. Another holding call against Auburn. And the ball will be marched back. Boy, that negates a nice play. They picked up good yardage on it, good positive yardage, and now it's going to be long. We have holding on the offense. Penalty is 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Repeat, first down. So first and long for Auburn. Let's go downstairs to Warren Pepper. Bob, some guys do, some guys don't have superstitions. Damian Craig will tell you straight up, he definitely has them, and this orange wristband thing became one just this year. He had the great game against Virginia. Normally they issue white sweatbands. He says, I got some orange ones. We're not supposed to wear them, but I like them. He plays like he did against Virginia. They'll only wear more than just orange wristbands and let him wear anything he wants to. Craig, hearing it out, looking for Hicks Poor. Griffin and Poor bang into each other. No flag. Good defense by the Ole Miss cornerback. Boy, and you hear it, but you hear the people yelling and booing, but that was just great coverage. That was really good coverage. He runs with his back. He's on the right of your screen, and you're going to see a long pass. Now, Poor is looking back at the football. Griffin doesn't get to look back at the football until he does. Now, look at that inside position. You can see he had the spot. He was playing the football. That's good coverage. That's coaching film stuff right there. That surely it? is. Boy, that's what you want your corners. If you're going to play press man coverage, you've got to have two corners that can play. There's Craig's numbers today, 55 yards through the air. He's got another second and long, second and 22. 
Hooper on the draw, right up the middle. Gets out to the 33-yard line. He's still short of the original line of scrimmage, though, which is the 37. Derek Burgess up the middle brings down Mark Heath Cooper. Boy, and a big down right here. Auburn is supposed to win this football game. They have a they have a good football team. Tommy Tupper's till team has just turned around saying, hey, we can do this and we can do that. We can stay with them. And they are staying with them. This is a big down. If you're on Ole Miss' side, you're saying get penetration, force Damian Craig out of the pocket. If you're on Auburn's side, you're saying Damian Craig come up with that big one. Look for Karsten Bailey, perhaps. Ole Miss made the bliss. They dropped eight back in coverage, though. Craig's got time, and he's got his man. Completion to Clifton Robinson, but it's going to be short of a first down. It's up to the 45-yard line. He needed to get to the 47. Again, Malika Griffin there to play defense for Ole Miss, and he's got a good start. Boy, and a late decision here, but again, a late decision whether to go for it or not, but again, they elect to come into coverage. They're going to give him the short pass, and he just drills it in there. But again, short of the first down. Now, once he catches it, look at the white shirts running to him. That's exactly what you want to do on defense. Let him catch that football and get to him quickly. So they bring him up, bring up the fourth down, force a punt. Now they got 10 guys up. Field position's been important in this game. Jared Holmes, a line drive kick. Rowe's going to take it at his own 18. Gets a block, cuts up the sideline, and knocked out of bounds the 30. Got a terrific block on the sideline by Anthony McGee. 37-yard kick, 12-yard return, and Ole Miss has pretty good field position as they get the ball back. 7-10 to go in the first half. It's been a tightly contested contest. Auburn 3-3 with Ole Miss. Back in a moment after this word from your local SEC station. Well, some people expected an offensive shootout today. It's been all defense, hasn't it, Dick? Boy, it has been defense. It's been good field position, each team taking advantage of it, making the other team drive the length of the field, and the result is that 3-3 three to three score. What Ole Miss has got to do in this situation is not make mistakes. Don't give up the interception. Don't put the ball on the ground with the fumble because they're playing very well. And off up the middle, Tony Canyon running hard. It's to the 34-yard line. Takia Spikes, Ricky Neal there to make the stop. And also Jeff Dunlap. Well, that was a stalemate on this line. Watch this big uh, defensive line right here. That's just a stalemate. And Kenny just finds a little seam and just kind of slips through it there to pick up the yardage. Maybe they ought to come back to that. If those big linemen can just stalemate the defensive linemen and you can pick up four or five yards, that's a good play. Auburn, they know they've got to take control of this football game. Oh, this now is going to the two tight end look. Canyon, this time nothing. Nothing there that time. Terrence Metcalf trying to get over 79 on the block, but beaten to the play by Jimmy Brumbaugh, who makes the stop. So. Ole Miss now going with Kedrick Vincent, a freshman. Terrence Metcalf, a freshman. Two, and they're starting five right now. And I'm surprised we haven't seen Rufus French be any kind of a, a factor in this football game yet. Maybe because the big tight end is a big target, 6'4", about 250. When he comes off the line, you can find him easy. But they haven't thrown to him. They threw that one time and missed him. One for five, third down conversions. Robert Reed is in the slot this near side. Five defensive backs for Auburn, and they blitz. Ole Miss picks it up. Was that a catch? I think it was. Rufus French with good hands, and if it's a catch, it's a first down. I think it was a catch all the way. So did Tommy. Yeah. Well, what, what French did is he came off the line, and there was nobody near him. There was no backer coverage on him. Again, you're going to see pressure. This is French right here. He's going to come off the line. But there's the pressure. That's Houston from the outside. But when French comes off the football, look, nobody even around him. Safety has to come and get him. Well, look at that catch yeah. by French. Soft hands. Oh, he's a big target. You want to make him a factor in this football game. He was one of the most title recruited tight ends in America last year. And Ole Miss did a terrific job of recruiting him. Ken Lucas now into the game at wide receiver, along with Sheldon Morris, a former walk-on, who's made some big-time contributions. Pitch back goes to Canyon. Outruns Carson. Gets across the 40. Dives up to about the 43-yard line. Antoine Nolan comes up from his quarterback spot to take his legs out from under him. Boy, one of the people I've really kind of zeroed in on today has been Leonardo Carson, number 95 on the on the Auburn Tigers. He's a defensive end. Big guy. See him right there? He doesn't get knocked down. I like his play. He quicks. He's quick. He hustles to the ball. Hard to believe that, as we told, said earlier, he's a former high school quarterback. He's got a good sense for the ball. I really like to watch him. 
Yeah, he played quarterback, by the way, at 245. He's now 275 in high school. Can you imagine? Oh, boy. That guy coming at you in the option. Canyon picking his way up to the 44-yard line. Stopped in there by, again, Leonardo Carson. Well, I can probably see it, hear them saying, uh, don't knock him out of the pocket. Make him stay back and pass. The announcers for the game are selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Sports. The broadcast is a copyright presentation. Any use of the broadcast without the express permission of the Southeastern Conference and Jefferson Pilot Sports is prohibited. Bob Kessling along with Dave Rowe and Warren Pepper. Our producer today, Rob Reichley, director Ken Dennis from Jordan-Hare Stadium in Auburn, Alabama. Big down, third down five. Patrick's rolling this way. Got some room, there's a flag down, and Patrick is dragged down, short of the 45-yard line. Ricky Neal slides out to make the stop. Yeah, you, we may see holding again. I think Todd Ware might be the one. He's the, he's the uh, offensive right tackle. And he's sliding out on that, on that pattern. When he runs along, he's got to hook the outside, and I think he just used his hands a little bit to hook him. Dave, another decision, though, for Auburn. Do you take this penalty? It'll be fourth down. Holding on the offense. I think he penalty declined. Is declined. Yeah. Fourth down. Watch along the outside line here. There he is, number 71. See, that's the hole right there. Look at Ricky Neal coming to the outside. Slide, slide, slide. You're not going to outrun him. <laughs> Good play by Ricky Neal. Well, what the a game. senior out of Daytona, Florida. What a game he had against Virginia, Bob. 12 tackles. He had 10 hits against Ole Miss last year in the Tiger win. He was the leading tackler last season for the Auburn Tigers. Here's Reagan King, who's done a terrific job punting today. It's the third punter that Ole Miss has been using. Randall Green and Kevin Cooper have been punting, but today it's Reagan King. Cooper, Marquise Cooper, takes a fair catch inside the Auburn 20-yard line. So the Tigers take over at their own 18. Tell you what, the Ole Miss kicking game has been big. The Rebels and the Tigers tied at three with 3.19 to go. First half at Auburn. Our nationwide insurance scholar athlete of the week is punter holder Jeremy Zills from Auburn University. The junior from Town Creek, Alabama, has a 3.20 GPA in forest engineering. Congratulations to Jeremy Zills of Auburn, our nationwide insurance scholar athlete of the week. Dead even at Auburn in the second quarter day. Boy, it is dead even, and it's been a dead even game in time of possession. The interesting thing, Bob, is the, the, that Auburn has only had the football three times in the first half. They chewed up that one long drive that we talked about where they got the field goal, but other than that, they just have not, well, they kept the football, but they haven't been able to score. It's like these two have been sparring with each other, and it's dead even. Time of possession, both teams about 13 minutes. The pass is tipped, but Rusty Williams able to hang on to it. Rusty Williams, good concentration there, and Damian Craig averted an interception. Yeah, that was tipped on the line of scrimmage. You'll see it right to the right of your screen right here. Watch, it's going to get tipped right there. Big hand goes up. That was Fisher. Yep. Come on, Fisher. And Spearman almost got his second interception. Boy, Spearman was close to that football. That's a lot closer than what it looked. Good gain on the play, though. Six yards. Craig, pressure, gets out of there. Gets away from one, two, three. They're still chasing him. Flag is down. He finally unloads and has his man. Picks Core. Core is dragged down to the 32-yard line. Now let's see what the flag is. Boy, will that tire out the defensive line. All of that for about six yards. Yes. <laughs> well, it's a 35-yard run by Craig. A lot of pressure there. Morris got pressure on, but you're going to see everything is negated because of a holding call. Now let me tell you something. The holding call was about 10 yards off the line of scrimmage. If they go to the point, and then mark off the 10 yards. It's going to be about, well, maybe it's right along the line of scrimmage. I looked at the flag. And no, I it's it was, about five yards behind yeah. it. And again, it's going to happen back in, right back in, well, you can't see it right in there. But again, look at the scramble, though. Golly, look how far back he is. Now, just pulls up, squares up his shoulders. We have holding against the offense. Penalty is half a distance to a goal. Repeat the down. It's a long way back. And that was a long play. I want to tell you something. Damian Craig has those hands up on his hips saying, I need to take a little bit of yeah. breath. I can promise you those big defensive linemen are saying that. Gosh, he makes you he makes you look foolish, doesn't he? I mean, he's just so smooth back there. 
you got to tighten it up a little bit when you play against him. Well, look at that, 73 yards passing, 11 yards rushing. Not the great rushing game that we've seen from him, but most quarterbacks have that in the minus stat. Now Auburn's got to make sure they don't make a mistake here. They take the easy way, the safe play to Rusty Williams on the draw. He only picks up a couple. The clock continues to run. Now Ole Miss has to decide if they're going to burn a timeout here. Well, I think they need to burn a timeout because you've got three timeouts. The, the team is going to face fourth down and about 12, 13 yards to go. You want to use as much clock as you can. You, you know you're going to get the ball back in midfield. They're electing not to. They're electing just let it let that clock run on down. Well, they could have they could have called timeout with about 153 left. Let's see if Auburn puts it up now. Third and 14, but they're backed up inside their own 20. There's 30 seconds that this play has taken from the time. They could have called timeout as soon as the ball was uh, dead. Craig finds his man Goodson. He's to the 22-yard line, well short of the first down. And what a hit. Gary Thickpen and Brock Kreitz and Bobby, dropped it. The clock just keeps on cranking. Well, now they finally call timeout with a minute and two seconds left. But they could have had about an extra 15, 20 seconds if they had elected. But boy, that's a good hit. Let him catch it underneath. Just come up good concentration on the ball because you know you're going to get hit back there. Good and good concentration. Bang, he gets hit, goes down. And all of a sudden, Ole Miss is going to get the football with about a minute left. Let's get down to Warren Pepper on the sideline now, Warren. Bob, 1987, Auburn won the Southeastern Conference Championship, first of three straight years, and they're honoring that members of that squad here today. And at halftime today, we'll talk to a couple of members of that team, along with some scores and highlights from around the league. That's coming up along with a, uh, a giant gulp of sweet tea uh, right here at halftime. <laughs> well, you look like you're holding up well down there, not wielding yet. And that was a terrific decade of the 80s for this Auburn football program. Championships in the SEC at 83 and 87, 88, 89. Some pretty good players, but on a hot, sweltery day here, Tyrone Dillard, the tight end, and Damian Craig trying to get some advice from upstairs. Yeah, Craig has got the headsets on there. A lot of people don't understand, but what he's doing is he says direct conversation with the coach. What he's looking for, here's the defenses that they're running against you. You're getting weak side pressure on the back side, so you may have to keep it back in. That's what you talk about. That's where the adjustments are made. Andre Roan is back for Ole Miss, standing at his own 35. What if Rebels have a minute to play with? I was wondering if they'd come after it. High floating kick, good kick. Back to the 26 goes Roan. Looks for the wall. Finds it. Gets out to the 43, but a flag is down. I think it's going to be a clip. Oh, and that hurts because it was way behind the play. The play had already burst through there. The play happened, and all of a sudden, the official throws the flag behind the play. You don't want to have penalties behind the play. Probably be that, that inadvertent hand in the back or something along that line. Tommy Teverville, bewildered by the call a little bit, pleading his case, but he's not going to win it. I think Anthony McGee was the one back blocking for Ole Miss and the one they caught. Flag is going to be down to 35, so that'll back up the Rebels. Well, the two decisions right here, Bob. You got 49 seconds to go. You played a great first half. Hang Illegal on. block below the waist against the return team. First down. But back to the point, you've got 49 seconds. You played a marvelous half of football. And if it's a 3-3 three to three game, Ole Miss is winning the first half because Auburn is a much stronger football team. So what I think they do in this situation is Patrick tries to find some maybe safe plays but does not, just does not throw the ball and force it into trouble. Here's an interesting call. Now the freshman yeah. Romero Miller comes yeah. in. Well, they're not going to worry about Patrick making a mistake. But Miller's a little bit more mobile back there. Maybe they're going to try to use him sprint outs, see if he can get out of trouble. A lot of pressure on the young freshman. Miller going to throw it hit as he throws and complete. Dave, I really think in this situation, this is really where they miss a John Avery because Avery is a back who could break it. You yeah. can can the ball to him, swing it out to him, and he can take it 80 yards. Yeah. Miller actually, like there's no pressure at all on him. He's back here. Carson just collapsed from the backside. You see 95 come in there. And they were fortunate to get that ball off because if he gets hit in that throwing motion, he could fumble. I just don't think you want to you don't want to force the football in this situation. I would say since Avery has taken the pad yeah. off, I think he's done for the day. Yeah, you see where he slid that pad down off of his arm? 
Obviously, it must have really bothered him. Here's the handoff straight up the middle. Canyon, good, tough run it after the 25. You know, we talked about Avery the last three of the last four games. Avery had 155, 119, and 123. So he was just hitting his stride. So that injury in early in the first game really has yeah. been a hamper to this Ole Miss offense. Well, he only, had, he only had two receptions, or two runs, I should say, that did not have a lot of chance. And he put his arm down. It was just a freak injury. And uh, they thought, I mean, he's got the heart of a lion. When you're five foot ten and you're about 180 pounds and you're playing uh, running back, you know you've got to have a huge heart. You know, another thing they lose about him, uh, he had a couple of uh, kickoff return touchdowns. He's yeah. excellent. He's a sprinter. So he's also a valuable man in their kicking game. Well, somebody said he ran a 4-3, 40-yard dash. I, I can't imagine that kind of speed. I've heard 4-4s four and that, but somebody told me that he ran a legitimate 4-3, 40-yard dash. That's pretty, that's cranking it. Yeah, he had kickoff returns of 197 yards last year. So John Avery, they're hoping to have him back. Their next game will be against Vanderbilt on September the 27th. So they've got an open date and then Vanderbilt. They hope to have him back for that game. Well, you know, it's interesting as we, as we get ready to go to halftime, Terry Bowden told us yesterday, he said, this Ole Miss team, they just kind of stick around. The longer they stick around, the more pressure it puts on us. And I think he felt all along that uh, he was going to be in for a tough football game. You know, some of the prognosticators said, oh, this is going to be a blowout at halftime, but uh, it's been anything but a blowout in the first half. 34 seconds remaining. Third down. Rebels need five for the first. They try the run. Starts outside. He's going to be close to it. Depends on where they mark it. If they mark it at the 31, it's a first down. Brad Weir knocks him out of bounds. And again, they keep the football away from Auburn. They don't give Auburn the chance. They are just controlling the clock with very little offense, not driving the football strong, but picking up those first downs, keeping the clock going. You know, Dave, we talked about the fact Auburn took their first possession at their own five, marched down the field for a field goal. But that was really a morale boost Ole Miss to keeping them out of the end zone. Exactly. They played well since then. Yeah, they ran those two fourth downs, and they made the first downs on it. And then they tried on a third down and one. They tried it again, got stuffed, and were held to that field goal. And since then, Ole Miss has really responded with some good, super strong, hard play. And off again, Canyon gets away from Carson in the backfield and darts ahead for three yards. Rob Pate comes up along with Charles Dorsey on the stop. The clock ticks down to 15 seconds, and Tommy Tuberville says, that's enough. We'll take it to the locker room and regroup, but he's got to be pleased. His Rebels are tied with Auburn as the teams go to the locker room. Our score is 3-3 as we head to halftime. Warren Pepper now standing by with Auburn. Coach Terry Bowden. Well, you know, they're running a ball control offense. We haven't had any big plays, and we've had the ball three times, four times the first half. So they're playing a great game. We've got to keep pushing. Don't panic. Somebody's going to break. Their surprise play of the first half was the fake punt. Yeah, that really, that really gave them the field goal there, and we had a chance to get the ball back. So great play on their part. We've just had to come out and play hard second half. All right, thanks. Go ahead, Coach. Terry Bowden taking his Auburn Tigers in at 3-3. We'll be back here with a full halftime highlight show here coming up from Auburn right after this. Today's Bell South SEC Game of the Week is brought to you by Nations Bank. By Toyota. Toyota every day. And by Nationwide Insurance. Check the yellow pages for the nationwide agent nearest you. Welcome back, everybody. Where it's Auburn 3, Ole Miss 3, and we've got a tie at halftime here at George Shure Stadium here in Auburn, Alabama. Hey, what was it supposed to be? Not exactly that. The play of the first half, without question, was the fake punt as Mississippi's Robert Reed took it 30 yards when it looked like they might have to give up possession. This would lead to their tying field goal, and this was without question the play of the first half that kept Mississippi right in this ballgame. The best stat to consider of the first two quarters? Well, time of possession. 14 minutes for Ole Miss, 15, just under 16 for Auburn, but they've only had the ball for four times. It's time now for the Sonics' best of the SEC. Here's a look now at the statistical leaders around the league. The best of the SEC is brought to you by Sonic, who invites you to drive in for a change.
Stuart Patridge of Ole Miss. A big day last Saturday against SMU. 20 of 28 passing for 235 yards. Tim Couch and Peyton Manning first and second in the league. Auburn's Karsten Bailey had his best day as a Tiger last week against Virginia. Four catches for 151 yards and two touchdowns. He leads the SEC in receiving yards. Second in the league is Larry Foster of LSU and South Carolina's Zola Davis is third. James Johnson of Mississippi State, one of only two SEC rushers over 100 yards a game. Last Saturday against Kentucky, 19 carries, 76 yards. Fred Taylor of Florida is first in the league in rushing. Starkville native Baron Simpson leads Mississippi State in tackles with 20 and is one behind the SEC leader, Kentucky's Willie Gary. And that's a look at the best of the SEC. 3-3 here at halftime, and I think one thing you've got to really consider from Mississippi standpoint, that John Avery has not played a down. They thought they would see action with him a little bit today, but he has not been in the first two quarters at all. I think that's a huge boost right now for Mississippi. Uh, let's look around the SEC now, brought to you by Morgan Keegan. Uh, Thursday evening, Alabama defeated Vanderbilt in early SEC action. Freddie Kitchen hooking up with Ed Sism here on a 17-yard touchdown. And then in the fourth quarter, Sean Alexander fumbles, picks it up, takes it in for the score as the Tide put it out of reach, and they were able to beat Vandy 20-0. Uh, today, you've got SMU at, at Arkansas to battle them, and then you've got South Carolina hosting Georgia at Athens and LSU in a night game against Mississippi State. That's a look around the SEC. We have a 3-3 tie here in Auburn. We will be back with more first-half highlights coming up after this. And it's halftime at a sun-baked Jordan-Hare Stadium. Ole Miss and Auburn tied at three. Welcome back, everybody. Warren Pepper with some scores here for you at halftime in the ACC. NC State up on Clemson, 7-3 at the half. Michigan over Colorado, 7-0. A couple of others include Penn State and Temple still in the first. They're tied at seven. And Central Florida and Nebraska, the first quarter, scoreless as we look at some other games from around the country. Back in 1987, the uh, SEC champions, the Auburn Tigers. As a matter of fact, they won it from 87, 88, and 89, and they're honoring that team from 10 years ago today. With me, the quarterback now, Jeff Berger, as uh, you're trying to say, man, 10 years has gone? Yeah, it doesn't seem that way. It's been, it's been a wonderful day getting to visit with everyone and being back and the excitement and uh, wonderful experience, but no, it doesn't seem 10 years. Does it seem as loud? Does the place look as big as it did maybe when you were 18, 19, 20 years old? Yeah, we, we, uh, we opened up with a new addition to the stadium, and uh, that was a, a wonderful experience. And, you know, ever since then, I, these stands have been full, and the tradition is, is, uh, is carrying on, and it's a wonderful, wonderful school. And what are you doing these days? I have a marketing company in North Alabama, part owner, and, and uh, going very well. They honored you guys before halftime. Uh, had you even seen any of them since your playing days? Well, we've seen, uh, I keep in touch probably 10, 15 of the guys that I was real close with, but, you know, we had 75 ball players here that came back after 10 years, and, I, and some of those guys hadn't seen since we've left and graduated. Thanks for joining me today. Thank I also you. want to bring in the linebacker from that team. He's kind of a more familiar face around campus because he also helps with the sidelines here during the radio broadcast for the Auburn Tigers. That's Quentin Riggins. Uh, what's going on, man? 3-3 three, three here. Give me the analysis. Well, this is my first game back. I missed the opening with Virginia, but uh, a little exciting. Old Miss always plays Auburn pretty close to the best, and so it's something that we expect to come in, but Auburn has to concentrate. It's going to be hot focus in on the assignments and get the job done. Did you forget you were supposed to be on the field prior to the game? I saw some of the guys over there razzing you say, hey, you too good to join us out here? Well, what ended up happening, I was getting my radio equipment from upstairs, and then I thought I was supposed to line up according to a, a, an order or something, and Coach Dye kind of yelled out like old times, come on out here. So I <laughs> ran on out there. Then right when I hit the uh, sideline, everybody, uh, well, they called my name out. So I, a wave to the crowd. I thought they might find you or make you run laps for being late or something. I thought about stadiums from Coach Dye's era, but he didn't make me run them. All right. Well, Quentin, what are you doing these days? I know you're involved on Saturdays with ball games, but beyond that, during the week. Well, I work in legislative affairs for Governor Bob James in the state, so it keeps me busy. Uh, sometimes I talk more football with the guys down at the state, but I uh, have a good time doing that. Finally, being around the team as you are, will Bowden really chew on these guys at halftime? 
because they're not where a lot of people thought they would be after the first two quarters, or does he maybe take a more business-like approach to say, here's what we need to do? I think it's going to be business-like. Correct some of the mistakes that happened in the first uh, half. Old Miss ran a little press man, little press man zone behind it, and so once they figure out some of the uh, blitz and some of the stunts that Old Miss doing, I think they make the necessary adjustments. Rusty Williams, I think, we have a big half running the ball in the second half. Very good. Uh, Quentin Riggin, Jeff Berger, our guest today at halftime as they are honored for their championship season in 1987. We will take a break. Send it to a local, your local stations along the network. We'll be back. It's still tied at three. Back after this. Our Kit Kat Play of the Week is brought to you by Kit Kat. Take a break with a Kit Kat bar. Check out Auburn senior quarterback Damian Craig as he rolls out, avoids the pressure, and fires downfield to Karsten Bailey for six. Watch it again. What a cannon arm by Craig, huh? He's pressured, rolls out to his left, and throws across his body 57 yards in the air and hits his receiver in mid-stride. And that's our play of the week. And it's Mississippi 3, Auburn 3 here at halftime with two quarters left here in Auburn. Uh, we'll throw it back upstairs to uh, Bob and Dave. Guys, what do you think? Uh, attrition may be a factor in the second half. Mississippi's very, very fortunate, I think, to be where they are, but I think that's also a big boost for them that they are at 3-3 without their best runner. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right, Warren. I think also, Dave, a big stat. No turnovers either team in the first yeah. half. Well, that's a huge stat, especially for Ole Miss, because that's what's kept them in the game. They have not made mistakes, but again, a big boost. But now, in the second half, you make your adjustments, and now's when the big guys start to get a little bit tired, and it's where your second team players start to play a big part of the game. Biggest play of the first half for the Ole Miss Rebels, a fake punt. Oh, this was incredible. Look at Reed, number eight. He catches it. He's up back. He just darts through. This was about fourth down and about 15 yards. And this got him in great field position. And then the Auburn defense. Oh, the Auburn defense led by Carson, number 95. He has been a workhorse in there. Here's a look at our Jefferson Pilot Insurance halftime stats. First down's even at seven. You know, it's several things jump out at me, Bob. As you mentioned, the no turnovers is a big thing. Look at time of possession. Auburn has had the ball for 15, almost 16 minutes, but they only had three possessions, and they only got three points out of those three possessions. And, of course, one of the possessions took up almost eight minutes of the clock as they had to drive the ball 86 yards off their own five to get their only field goal. Oh, exactly. And now we come to that moment, Bob. That moment I look forward to, my rewinds. And first thing I think of for Ole Miss is don't make mistakes. They have not made mistakes in this first half. And keep scrapping and kicking. Their kicking game has really been incredible in this first half. They've held Auburn back. For Auburn, they have to make plays. They've got to make big plays. Damian Craig has also got to take control of this football game. He's too good a player to be throttled up like he has been in this first half. And I think depth is a very big part of the second half. Yeah, because the players are getting tired right now, especially the big linemen. And now's when your second and third team players have to play not a full game, but they've got to come in and spell. And this is where Ole Miss gets into trouble because it's the numbers game, as we've talked about many times. Both teams have been a little cautious. They haven't wanted to make mistakes. Will Auburn try and open things up and put more pressure on Ole Miss? Oh, I definitely think so. I think that when they get in that locker room, I think Terry Bowden and his crowd are going to turn around and say, hey, we haven't thrown one time to Karsten Bailey long. We haven't haven't challenged the defense. We've been trying to establish the running game. Maybe it's not there. Old Miss is playing those backers up to stop the run. Maybe we need to go to the deep game. I look for a much different game in the second half. And Rufus French hasn't been much of the Ole Miss offense from their tight end slot, so we'll look for him too in the second half. Auburn and Ole Miss, 3-3. Teams coming back onto the field. Kickoff to start the second half in a moment. Jefferson Pilot Sports, exclusive presentation of the Bell South SEC Game of the Week is brought to you by BP. At BP, everything we do is to keep you moving. By Mazda, experienced cars and trucks built with a passion for the road. Mazda. By Sonic, where we invite you to drive in for a change. By Gatorade Thirst Quencher, you don't have to live thirsty. Life is a sport. Drink it up. And by the Jefferson Pilot Life Insurance Company, the vision to power your dreams. This young Ole Miss team, with sometimes six freshmen on the field at the same time, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Auburn. Warren Pepper now is with Ole Miss coach Tommy Tupperville. Tommy, 3-3 three, three at the half. This isn't what everybody said was going to happen here today. Well, that makes it fun. Uh, we... Uh, we played good at times. We missed too many tackles. We're going to have to keep the ball a little bit more on offense. I think the key to this football game will be they get the ball at kickoff. 
they're going to be fresh. I think we're in better shape than they are because we played two games. So if we can continue to just make the ball game go longer, we'll have a chance to maybe pull this thing out. You haven't played Avery. You thought you might. Has there been a decision made that he won't play? He can't hold on to the football. So uh, we're just going to hold him out and hope he can go the next game. All right, Tommy. And I'll never bring you in front of the Auburn fans to do this interview right. again. All Thank right. you. Okay. Coach Tommy Turberville, uh, back upstairs to you, Bob. All right, we talked about Avery. Now Damian Craig and Dave, a lot of responsibility and pressure on his shoulders just have to get him going. Oh, yeah, because he is he is the leader out there. He's the emotional leader. He's not a quarterback who sits back and and just kind of just plays the game. But look at the possessions. They only had four times they had the ball. And we talked about that first one. That's the one they drove 86 yards for the field goal. Other than that, they've just punted the football. They have not done anything of consistency. So Terry Bounds team trying to regroup. They know that they have a little bit more depth, more numbers. I mean, Ole Miss, when Tommy Tiberville took over the program because of probation, only had 60 players on scholarship. Now they got about 70, but they're still way under the limit. So he asked, went to cross the state, ask Ole Miss families, supporters of the program, send your kids to us as walk-ons, help us rebuild this. And Tuberville's done a terrific job. Well, he's gotten some excellent players. He's got a great future. We've, we've seen a little bit of Romero Miller. That's the heir apparent for this quarterback position. We've watched Rufus French, who's just a sophomore at, court, at uh, tight end, who's an outstanding star. And then you mix in some of the other players, and all of a sudden you've got the makings of a good football team. Markeith Cooper standing deep. He'll take the kick from Steve Lindsay. 3-3, we start the second half. Bob Kessling, Dave Rowe, Warren Pepper with you on our Bell South SEC Game of the Week. Lindsay's accounted for the only points for Ole Miss today. This one not quite as long as his earlier kickoff, and Cooper will have it at the five. Breaks the seam to the 30. To midfield, and Auburn will have great field position. Boy, Marquis Cooper made a cut that was just incredible on the kick. He was going to come to the wide side of the field. Now watch, he's coming over this way here, and watch when he plants. Right here, bang, now right back inside that hole, and look at the seam he found. That was an outstanding cut. 42 yards, they call him the Lizard, and Cooper gets him off to a great start. So Auburn gets it at the, he stepped out at the 45. You see Damian Craig's past distribution hasn't gone to the tight end yet. It hasn't been much of the Auburn offense. This is sight adjustment. This is an audible. He's going to call off the line. And the pitch back goes to Rusty Williams. Trying to outrace him. Can't do it. Barely gets back to the line of scrimmage. Walker Cooper. Uh, Walker Jones gets out there, and Johnny Jones shut him off. Yeah, Johnny Jones, a uh, surprise, a little bit of a, a surprise today. He wasn't supposed to start, but he's a, he's a good player. He's got good rangy ability. He's tall in that he slides along. He doesn't look real, real heavy, but he slides along the line really well. Walker Jones, of course, a longtime friend of Peyton Manning, the quarterback at Tennessee. Of course, their fathers played together at Ole Miss. They talk about once a week. They talk this week. Pate said he's going to watch the game today and watch his old buddy Walker Jones going up against these Auburn Tigers, and I'm sure he's proud of Walker Jones and the all this effort so far in this one. Craig's got a man open. Get Goodson, hang on. They say yes. Oh, and look at Tommy Tuberville. He was, oh, was he upset. I mean, he ran over to that official. That's the most demonstrative I have ever seen him. He thought he was juggling the football. It was right in front of him. Oh, there's no doubt. Watch this right here. Wide open. Just lays the ball perfect. Good sight right there. Looking downfield. Now watch when he has to have control. Bobble, bobble, bobble. Well, remember, if they push him out, he is out. That yeah. was close. Everyone on the Ole Miss sideline was convinced he didn't have it. But the man who counts the official, and he said he was in. First and 10 at the 35. Williams pounding right at him. Good cutback by Williams. Takes it inside the 25-yard line. They, didn't, they said Rusty Williams didn't play very well against Virginia. They weren't sure how much he was going to play. He started, and he's played big today. Boy. Yeah, and he comes right up the middle. Now watch. Once he gets up the middle now, back to the outside. Pick up a couple blocks right there. I think Bailey, number five, gets a good block for him. And he's down inside the, the territory of Ole Miss. And all of a sudden, Auburn, this is what Tommy Tuberville was worried about. Auburn getting uncranked and coming on you because they can roll like an avalanche. Starting to beat on you a little bit, and that's what Auburn's trying to do. 
Another call. Check with me on the line. Craig, look at Fires the inside pass to Bailey. That was almost picked off. Brock Kreitz read it well and almost picked it off as he stepped in front of Bailey. I don't think he caught that, did he? No, I, he did. Yeah, I thought Kreitz was right there. Kreitz was looking at the quarterback, and it was just a quick, it was going to be a little dart underneath. Watch, a little dart underneath right there. Now watch Kreitz, 14, come into your picture. He gets a hand in there. Oh, yeah, and you see the ball come down. Good call by the official. Very smart play by Kreitz, the senior from Naperville, Illinois. They don't see many linebackers with 14. That's more like a defensive safety or something like that. And yeah. uh, he's got one of those numbers, so you know he's a very active player. Well, there's a quarterback when he came and wanted to play quarterback. And Auburn suddenly takes a timeout, so Damian Craig doesn't exactly like the look. And they want to talk about it. So Auburn burns a timeout with 13-21 to go, third quarter. Tigers on the move in a 3-3 game with Tommy Tupperville's Rebels. 3-3, 13-21 to go, third quarter, and Auburn deep in Ole Miss territory. And, and Bob, watch this right here. Watch Goodson when he gets the ball. Now, this is the play that was controversial, but watch here. Bobble, bobble, bobble. Now he has control right there. Now watch this foot right there. You see him drag that foot out of bounds. He drug his foot out of bounds, that right toe. That was what the, I don't think Tommy Tuberville saw, but he definitely drugged that right foot to get it out of bounds. Goodson, three catches for 57 in the game. Tigers have it after the timeout. Second and ten. Quarterback draw. Craig, they stuff it out and drop it. Good recognition that time by Ole Miss. And Derek Burgess, the freshman, makes the play. Boy, and that was a, just a heads-up play. It almost looks like he's like he's trailing the play. He's 56. He's a down lineman. Now look at him roll right out. And that was designed to be a quarterback draw all the way. You run your receivers deep. You let your lineman come in. You look for that seam. And Burgess... Almost like he's just like a bird dog in there watching Craig rolls right back into it. He made a spin move on Demarcus Curry and made the play. Craig goes with a shotgun, third and 12. Good time, and he's got his man over the middle. No, he dropped it. The ball hit the turf. He was going for Karsten Bailey, and the ball skipped on him. Boy, and Bailey is this go-to guy. He told us that yesterday. He said, when I need it, I go to Bailey, and Bailey just drops the football. It looks like it hits him a little bit low and goes right through his elbows almost. Again, not a lot of pressure, late pressure now. Look at Bailey. He's got it, right? But he doesn't get those arms together, those elbows together, and the ball comes right down between his arms. Jared Holmes on for his second field goal attempt. He's got the only Auburn points, a 26-yarder. This one will be from 43. With Zills to hold. Lots of leg. No way. But he missed it. Off to the right, and the Rebels have held. So Auburn holds the ball for two and a half minutes, but they get nothing out of it. The Rebels will have it for the first time in the second half. When we come back, it's Ole Miss, three. Auburn, three, and the Rebels are jacked up. Boy, are they jacked up, and they should be because they are doing exactly what they have to do to beat Auburn. And Terry Bowden knows it. Tommy Tuberville knows it. They know that it's a game of mistakes. It's a game of taking advantage. And when you get down there, you're supposed to at least come up with three points. He comes up dry. They got nothing. Now watch this offense come out here and bounce around. Interesting now because... Stuart Patridge into the game at quarterback. Romero Mello was up there, but Patridge gets the start, and they go right back to the running game. Ole Miss, Dave, is just trying to shorten this game. Oh, they are. They're just trying to take it down against them. It's almost like you're kind of playing around until the end of the game and see who gets the ball last. Good linebacker movement right here. We've talked a lot about the Keo Spikes and Ricky Neal, the two inside backers. It's awfully tough to run in the middle and make a living out of running in the middle. That time they picked up about three, four yards, which is good yardage. But Tommy Tuberville, what he wants to do is just keep the ball. Don't let Auburn have chances and hope at the end that you get a break. Here's McAllister. The tailback for the Rebels. Here comes Auburn. Now they hand the ball to him, picking his way across the 35-yard line. Ball fell, but he fell on it, I believe. McAllister, they say that he reminds him of Do Innocent, the former great Ole Miss running back. And crowd at Oxford's been yelling dues. Yeah. And what happens that time is Auburn elected to come from the outside. This was a blitz. 
you see he, he just Alexander just looks around find the Galaxy, I should say just finds his uh, little hole there and then he drags for that first down it's exactly what you want to do the clock keeps on ticking the pressure keeps on getting on Auburn and Ole Miss keeps on getting excited and I can promise to Keo Spikes he's saying wait a minute this ain't supposed to be happening right now and off goes to Kenyon Blast his way over left tackle out near the 45 yard line good gain on first down Brad Ware Ricky Neal team up on the stop. This is a confident Ole Miss football team. Oh, it is, and it's a surprising Ole Miss football team. I talked with Langston Rogers at uh, halftime, the great SID and famous SID of Ole Miss, and he said, I'm really surprised. He said, I know our guys are scrappy, but boy, this is where it really takes a toll on us. Well, it looks like they got a shot in the arm when it came out at halftime. They rushed the ball 20 times for 73 yards in the first half. They're coming out rushing right at Auburn in this one. Another pitch back. Canyon cuts it, or uh, McAllister cuts it back in, but there's a penalty flag. Yep. McAllister would have the first down. Takeo Spikes makes the stop. Yeah, this is going to be the, the wide receiver coming in on the chop block. You can't do that. And what happened is one of the wide receivers came right in from his spot and just threw like a cross body block, and you can't do it. It's a chop. It's one of the rules changes this year. It's to protect the defensive players. Kind of a foolish penalty. Dick Burleson with the call. Illegal block below. Illegal block below the waist against the offense during the run. 15-yard penalty and repeat the down. Now watch right here. This is the chop block. See right down there below the waist? And he's trying to get to Keo Spikes. He knows he's an important player, but you've got to hit him up. Morris cannot go down. You can't blow a block below the waist. Again, the Morris, the guy that's been a special teams whiz from the former walk-on, now leaves the game. They're also playing Ole Misses without Corey Peterson who was scheduled to be a starting wide receiver, but he's got a bruised kidney, so he can't go in this one. He's on the bench, and now the Auburn crowd trying to spur on this defense. Second and 15 Rebels. I think the Auburn crowd has been stunned in the first half. Patrick's to French across the middle. He runs right through a tackle by Takeo Spikes, and now he's gonna be about seven yards short of the first down. Is Mr. French a loader what? Oh, boy. It might have been, that might have been Ricky Neal, but I'll tell you one thing, he ran over him. Watch this, it's gonna be a fake to the left. Now come back, fake to the right, look at French. See French coming off the line, now watch this. Bang, he just runs right over him. Oh yeah, you're right, it was Spikes and then it was Neal. There's Takiya Spice. <laughs> you're right, it was Spikes. He good, ran over Spikes and Neal. Good friend of Kiefer McGee, the great running back at, at Mississippi State who passed away in the tragic drowning incident. He writes, Kiefer McGee's numbers on his gloves while he plays to keep the memory alive. Now Ole Miss decides this is a key play. Take a timeout here. So Ole Miss talking about it. We'll be back in a moment. 9.50 to go in the third. Auburn and Ole Miss tied at three in the third quarter. SEC football is brought to you in part by Advance Auto Parts. The best part is our people. No Miss has had a timeout to talk about it. Third and six, Dave. This is a very big play for the well, Rebels. Well, it sure is. I looked that time, and what they did is Ole Miss came out and set up in their formation just to see how Auburn would react. I looked at Robert Reed. He was in the slot. He's the H-back. He came out there, and they tried to match him up with a linebacker. That may be where they, where they elect to go, because there's not many linebackers that are going to stay with Robert Reed and his speed. Grant Hurd. Split out wide to the right. Reed in the slot inside him. And Patrick's looking. Thrown away from him. Finds Rowan. He's open. He's in the Auburn secondary. Inside the 40-yard line. They might have thrown a little deep that time. Everybody was looking at Reed and Heard, and they went the other side to Rowan. Boy, outstanding pattern right here. This is a crossing pattern. He's going to go into the inside. Plant now right there. Come across. Big target. Look at that. He's wide open. Defender slips a little bit on the play. And then Roan picks up two or three blocks. That was Casher who had the coverage from left corner spot. He may have slipped coming off the ball. Andre Roan goes out. You see two catches for 39 yards. Had two catches coming into the game this season. And that clock just keeps on a ticking. Patridge rolls out, looking, firing long. The pass complete to his big tight end, Rufus French, inside the 20. 
Rob Pate, a, free, a strong safety, comes up to make the stop. But the Rebels, a very well-executed play. Well, this is an outstanding play. It's a fake along the line, and they don't hold backside coverage. In other words, they let the quarterback here all out by himself. He goes to the big man, Rufus French, the big target, 6'4", with those great hands, and he picks up a first down. And I want to tell you right now, the stadium is just stunned. Everybody's sitting down. Now they're getting up a little bit for the defense, but there's a, a red crowd across the way that's just yelling and screaming and standing up. It's back to McAllister. They jam him up, and he gets away, squirts to the 15-yard line. Pick up of just about two for Deuce McAllister, the freshman from Morton, Mississippi. Second down and seven. Now remember this Ole Miss team winning on the road in the SEC. Nothing really new to them. They won at Georgia and at Vanderbilt last year. Well, the longer they stay in this football game, the more excited those people are going to get because it's just a stun right now. I mean, everybody picked this game to be a blowout, and it's certainly anything but. Two tight ends for Ole Miss on a second down and seven. There's the Ole Miss cheering section. Rooting on the Rebels. McAllister inside the 10 to the 7. Matt Luke, Terrence Metcalf opening up the holes in the middle, and Brad Ware saves the touchdown. This was designed to go over here to the left, but what happens is McAllister just sees the hole, and look at the good block there by 79, Terrence Metcalf. He comes off the line, catches the backer, and just drives him across. Deuce McAllister. Ole Miss scores a touchdown here. This is going to be really a stunned crowd. At 92 yards rushing against SMU. First and goal, Rebels. In a tie game, 3-3. Patrick, they didn't let French out. He throws in the end zone. Out of bounds. Grant Hurd couldn't get his feet down. Oh, and he threw it too late. Hurd had it beat to the corner. He was, he was running. Watch this. It's going to be an out. Now, right here, he plants, and he goes out. Now, watch this. Bang, now, throw it right now, throw it right now, throw it right now. He waits. You can see Patridge comes out about, and watch Patridge. He knows it. He just goes, oh, that's that just shows you a quarterback who says, oh, I should have thrown that thing earlier. Dave, I'm not so sure he was the lead receiver, though. I think he was looking for Rufus French, and he was covered, and then he saw Hurt late. And I thought he might have had a chance to pick up some yardage if he had run. He had the outside corner made, so. Second and goal. Second and goal with the two tight ends again. French and H back. They give it to McAllister. Turns inside the five to the three-yard line. That's where the Rebels will have it. Third and goal. Boy, if there ever was four down territory, this is it. This is, I don't think this is field goal time. Quentin Reese makes the stop for Auburn. And that's Noel Mazzone. He's the, he's the offensive coordinator. I think he's just over there just kind of hoping that, I think he comes right back to the play with Hurd. I like that rollout with Patridge going to the flat. He's got that run option. I love the way he greeted his quarterback last time. Had his hand around his head, smiling. And, of course, Terry Bowden on the other side of worry, Terry Bowden. Rufus French with a tight end to the right side. Hurd, single coverage down this way. Roan is the slot man. McAllister, the tailback on third and goal. Roan in motion. And he's going to be sacked. Penalty marker is down. Jimmy Brumbaugh gets back there and puts the pressure on. Boy, and that's, that almost is assuredly going to be in the inside line. Most likely a holding call. If it is, it's going to, it's just, yep, yeah, that's what his call is. It's going to be holding against Ole Miss. And that negates what an outstanding drive this has been. They're probably going to have to settle for a field goal. Leonardo Carson gets the upfield pressure. Watch him in the middle. It was pressure, all right. Holding on the offense. Penalty is declined. Fourth down. There's not much decision here, is there, Dave? Well, I, I know you got to go for three, but I'm, I'm kind of a gambler. I almost think you ought to go for you, seven. Not, not yeah. for the six. No, no, no. You've got to, you've got to get points. They have a chance to lead Auburn in the second half, and it's something that nobody expected. So they need to get the three points. That's a sure thing from this distance, almost. Steve Lindsay hit from 52 earlier. Now this one from 23 for the lead. But you can see the angle he has. It's a tough angle. And he boots it right through there. And the Rebels take a third quarter lead at Auburn. Tommy Tuberville's team takes a 6-3 lead over the Auburn Tigers. Look at Tuberville.
Ole Miss has the lead with 6.59 to go on the third. We'll be back after a word from your local SEC station. Steve Lindsay has two field goals, the only scoring for the Rebels, but it's been enough so far to keep them ahead of the Auburn Tigers. It's 6-3 to three, with Lindsay set to kick it off to Markeith Cooper back in his goal line awaiting the kick for the Auburn Tigers. Another booming kick by Lindsay that goes all the way through the end zone again. So Auburn takes it at its own 20, and you see the scoring drive. 13 plays, 68 yards, 530 results in the Lindsay field goal. And they couldn't ask for more if they're an Ole Miss fan. Five and a half minutes of possession, 13 plays. You keep the ball up away from Auburn. The clock ticks down. Auburn, is only, this is only the second possession they've had. Tell you what, Lindsay has been their most valuable player Boy. so far. And now a lot of pressure on that man's shoulders, Damian Craig. He's a leader. He's a very, very vocal fireball leader. He's a lot different than most quarterbacks. Coaches will, coaches will tell you, though, it's a four-quarter game. We'll see how much the Rebels have got left. They've come out that time like they're shot out of a cannon. Pennington is knocked back before he gets to the line of scrimmage. And there's Walker Jones again. Yeah, and Burgess in there, too, a defensive lineman in there. Watch him go in the backfield. Move around in there. You see Walker come from the outside, and Burgess, uh, Derek Burgess coming from the inside. They drop him for about a yard loss on first down. It ain't supposed to happen. Second down. They actually lost about a half a yard on that play. I just think it's Damian Craig time. Time to go deep. Time to throw that ball. Craig looking. Got time. And he throws complete again to Goodson out of bounds. Gary Thickpen rides him out, but that's a first down for the Tigers. And what Goodson did that time is he ran the corner deep and broke off quickly. The corner thinking that all of a sudden they were going to go deep, and Goodson turned out. Nice play. Good pass, good, good eye coordination between Damian Craig and his wide receivers. That's what they do so well. Sometimes, you know, you just can't get the running game going. You need to just abandon it. If it ain't going, go to something else. Throw that football. But 15 attempts... There's not a lot of attempts for someone that can throw the football like Damian Craig. First and ten, Goodson now four catches for 74 in the game. Craig rolling. All Miss chasing him, and he throws it away. Good pressure again by the Rebels as Mitch Baker and Johnny Jones and Derek Burgess in there to run him down. Boy, Johnny Jones was running that time, Bob, like he was a quarterback. I mean, he was running out the outside. He kept good containment. You can see him there. He's waving. But uh, I'm sure if, they, if that's a wave to come out, they're saying, no, no, stay in there. We're doing the right things right now. Johnny Jones, a junior college player out of Northwest Community College. Rebels have been able to get several key players from that school. And now it's second and 10, Auburn. And again, now the Tigers go to three wide receivers. As Hicks Poor comes into the game, slotted to this near side. Craig looking, firing, got his man, that's Hicks. Hicks Poor on the reception. He's been the go-to guy today, and Tommy Strickland punishes him a little bit for the catch. Short game, though. Boy, he did. Did you see that body movement by, by Hicks Poor? Once he made that turn, boy, I mean, that, that safety came in and just drilled him, just nailed him a shot. But you'll give him that short little one because, again, now it's third down about seven. Timothy Strickland made the stop again. And you know, one thing I noticed about Damian Craig, look at the arm, the orange uh, arm, uh, sweatband. They're gone. Got white back on. Those orange didn't work out real well in that first half. Clock ticks down to five minutes to go. Craig, nowhere to go. And he's close to a first down. Boy, Bob, he took a hit, too. He took a hit. Couple good blocks in there by his lineman, Geno James, especially got one. But I mean, Craig took a good, solid hit. Brock Kreitz is the guy who laid the leather on him. Well, watch, watch his body shake when he comes up here. Good block there by Geno James on the left side. Now watch this hit. He knows he's got to get first down yardage. It's not slide. Bang. And again, that was a good secondary coverage sack or making forcing him to run. Look at this coverage. Press man at the top, running man to man. You see the underneath zone right there. Good coverage right in front of him. And he just barely missed. Good thing he didn't slide. 
You know, Dave, you mentioned a good point. I think Griffin, Hurd, Strickland, and Thickpen have been outstanding in that secondary for Ole Miss, and they've pretty much gone the whole way. Yes, they have. There's, there's very little there's very little backup back there, and uh, you see Hurd there got those hands up on those on those hips. That means he's sucking some uh, pretty hot air. So you see Damian Craig total offense today, 17 rushing. Over 100 yards passing, but again, Tigers with no touchdowns, and they trail 6-3 to three as we tick down the clock in the third quarter. Craig on first down. Byron Long looking for Goodson. Overshoots it. Double coverage that time. Thick Pand and Hurd come over. Did you see Hurd come? Hurd just turned around. He's the midfielder. He's reading the quarterback's eyes. He's the free safety. And I mean, he just turned around and just darted for the middle of the field. As soon as he saw that, uh, him zeroing in on that deep wide out, he was running straight. There he is. See, number two, running straight to the intercept spot, the intercept the wide receiver to help out. But he just zeroed in on him. Super play by Ronnie Hurd. Hurd took himself out of the game to catch his breath. Jason Klingen comes into the game at the strong safety spot. Again, second down, and Auburn's got to take another timeout. Confusion in the Auburn huddle, and they get to the line of scrimmage. Terry Bowden burns his second timeout of the half, so the Tigers have one left with 4.32 here to go in the third quarter. Boy, look at Terry Bowden. You can just tell a quarter of a coach by his body language. He's got his arms folded. He's upset. He's trying to keep his composure, and he does a great job at that. And he's just talking upstairs. He's a very emotional coach. And he's just not, they're not getting it done. You can see the look of worry on his face. He's got some pretty good concern here. 6-3 Ole Miss leads here next week. Arkansas against Alabama. Mike DeVose, so far 2-0 in his initial season as the Crimson Tide coach. will go up against the Danny Ford coached Arkansas Razorbacks. Ford, of course, the Alabama alum. Today, Arkansas taking on SMU. And Alabama is enjoying their victory on Thursday night against Vanderbilt. Well, there's that off for an offensive line. T.J. Dunnigan and T.J. Mears, Demarcus Curry. They've got to get something done, don't they? And you know what? They've given him a lot of time. They've given Damian Craig a lot of time to sit back there. But as you mentioned, the secondary has been marvelous coverage. They've run that man-to-man -man at the outside corners. And they've run that underneath zone. I mean, Tommy Tuberville's got to be about three inches off the ground right now because we're creeping down almost for four minutes left, a little bit over four minutes left in this third quarterback quarter, and he's leading. And but but he also ball knows ball. he's one big play away from trailing oh, yeah. in the game. Oh, yeah. He's one Karsten Bailey home run. Eric Lowe into the game for Auburn. He's the slot man in the up part of your screen. And again, Craig swings it out to Marquise Cooper. Cooper trying to dig for the first down, but they're going to knock him out of bounds. He is into Ole Miss territory, but short of the first down. Did you see Geno James that time? He, boy, I mean, he just leveled. He just took care of the right end. He just, but again, you've got to get out. You've got to get that first down yardage. And that's just what Damian Craig is not doing. Whether they're confusing him or exactly what they're doing, he just doesn't look like a quarterback that's really just feels sharp today. He's just having one of those off days. Third down and five, not a bigger down than this one. Auburn trying to keep the drive alive, trailing 6-3. over the middle to Karsten Bailey had the first down went back a little bit and then surged ahead to get it back Karsten Bailey gives Auburn a first down at the Ole Miss 40 yard line and Damian Craig told us yesterday that Karsten Bailey was his go-to guy he said he said when I get the situation where I really need it I've told Karsten Bailey that I'm coming to him this is crossing pattern from left to right you're going to see Bailey just come along the line right in here and you see bang he's going to drop it right to him and he's going to, right there, he doesn't have the first down. Now he's got the first down yardage. Nate Wayne missed the tackle. The first one, if he would have gotten it, it might have kept him short of the first down. But as it is, the Tigers now have a first and 10 at the Ole Miss 40. Pitch back. Pennington. Barely gets back to the line of scrimmage. Tell you what, Ole Miss, they haven't been blitzing a lot. They've been able to control them with those up front guys. Yeah, they really have. They've played hard football. They've, they've played scrappy football. And the thing that comes to my mind is that they have not hurt themselves. They have not had that huge big penalty, that turnover, that fumble, that uh, missed assignment they played. This has been an incredibly good, well-played game, 
by Ole Miss. No turnovers. I mean, we're talking about nothing. I haven't seen. I don't think I've seen a fumble or an interception today. No, no, nobody's even dropped the ball. No. Hardly. So Ole Miss digging in. Second down and right at ten, just slightly inside ten. And now I whistle before the play. Play clock ticks yeah. down. I saw the play clock at zero. Boy, and that's what you don't want to have. You got second down and ten. Now all of a sudden you're going to have second down and fifteen. Ooh, that'll make a coach's molars grind. Dead ball foul, delay of game, offense, repeat the down. Terry Bowden, 4-0 all time against Ole Miss, but his team is struggling to get something going offensively. I got an interesting note uh, this week from a fellow named Roger Cavender in Ball Ground, Georgia. He said, I plan on taking a nap in the second half. He said, so don't make it exciting like last week. He better stay up. Call him. <laughs> make call him and make sure he's still awake because you don't go to sleep in a football game like this. It's only the third penalty of the day for Auburn. And Ole Miss with four. It's been a very well-played football game. Tight, low scoring. 6-3 Ole Miss. Greg pressured and sacked. Ole Miss gets to it. Again, great rush as Michael Boone is able just to overpower the Auburn line. Boy, just, just overpowered, just coming in the middle. Just get in time. You'll see him, number 62. Just crushes in there. See him from the left side. Boom, now he's got him. Don't let go. Hope for help. And I think that's the first time I've seen Damian Craig sack this year. You know, Derek Burgess also got a great push right in the middle. Pushed him back, and that opened things up for Michael Boone. Yeah. Well, that's what that's what defensive line work is. It's a, it's a combination. It's one guy getting a deep rush, and the other one cleaning up. Damian Craig again looking, thrown over the middle. He's got his man bailing. Carson Bailey down to the 22-yard line and a first down for the Auburn Tigers. And now all of a sudden you see a different Damian Craig. He's thrown his strike. He's got the field a little bit more. He's drilled it in there, and he's a little bit more emotional. Went to Bailey, his go-to guy when he needs him. He said, no, he said nobody worked harder than Bailey did in the offseason, and it's paying off. Yeah, he's going to see him on a crossing pattern over the middle. Coming from the right to the left, you see him lead him out there. He's wide open, just wide open. Carson Bailey with touchdown catches of 57 and 77 in the victory against Virginia. Fred Beasley back at fullback as Auburn has a first and 10 of the 22 of Ole Miss. Beasley up the middle. Gets a block on the corner by Pennington. And Beasley scores. Now they're going to put him down at the three-yard line. And what a cut! What a cut by Beasley! There was a little tiny hole. That ball was designed to go up the middle, and all of a sudden he just burst to the outside. And that's what that's the difference between good backs and great backs. But again, it's good. the ball's designed to go there. Watch the block right there. Bang! He just slips to the outside. Good block there by his, uh, by one of his wide receivers. Those that's Pennington. Pennington, yeah. You see where he steps out of bounds. And boy, Pennington got a good block downfield. I tell you what, though. Beasley did a terrific job stretching that ball to the end zone. He stepped out of bounds to at the three. They give it back to him. He pulls his way. This time he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Fred Beasley, and Auburn takes the lead, nine to six. Well, I looked at one of the big men, DJ, DJ Dunnigan. He just blew him off the line. He was three, four yards in the, into, the, into the end zone. This is just big time football. Just drive them off. Control the line of scrimmage. Let him put his head down. Get that body lean. Keep those legs. There's look at there. There, that's done against 77. He drives his man. Jared Holmes on for the extra point. And it's good. And Auburn takes a 10-6 lead. Fred Beasley's first touchdown of the year. And Auburn now grabs the lead from Ole Miss 10-6. Now, what does Ole Miss do? The momentum's back in Auburn's corner. They've got to get it back. Well, first of all, let's take a peek at this touchdown right up the gut. Look at this power football, just strength. Big man on big man, just drive them off the line, and you get an advantage when you got those 300-pound linemen just, just drive blocking off the line. But it's really an important series for Ole Miss. They, they've given up a touchdown. Their offense has got to come out and take that ball control back. They're still in this football game with only a minute 20 left, and nobody knows that better than Tommy Tuberville. He's over there saying, listen, offense, we're still in this football game. 
They're four points down. All they have to do is drive, get good field position, break a big play, find somebody. For Terry Bowden, he's finally taken a deep gasp and said, hey, we finally have, we finally got some assemblance. Interesting, it was Damian Craig to Karsten Bailey that set it all up as go-to guy. You see the scoring drive, 13 plays, 80 yards. Beasley the three-yard run at 5.38, the time of possession. So the Tigers, for the second time today, have the lead. The first time, it was 3-0. That was way back in the first quarter. So Jared Holmes to kick it off as Auburn has the lead, 10-6. Cashin and Morris deep. And the kick is going to go all the way back. And it's going to be down deep in the Ole Miss end zone. And so the Rebels will take the ball. Ken Lucas downs it deep in the end zone. And so the ball goes to the 20. First and 10 Ole Miss. This has, been a, this has been a second half of long drives. You know, Auburn took that first ball, that first series punted. Then Ole Miss drove the length of the field, got their field goal. They had that holding call, which kept them from going for a touchdown. And then Auburn comes right back and drives the length of the field for the touchdown. And all of a sudden, you see the Auburn players got a lot more bounce. The fans have got more bounce. Patrick's into the game. Big possession for the Rebels. Can they get the momentum back? Looking, firing, good batter, good connection. Catch by Grant Hurd. Hurd running in the Auburn secondary. Chase down. Quinn Reese runs him down, but not till he gets to the 23-yard line. The big play receiver, Grant Hurd, comes across the middle and makes a big play. Wow, what a play. What a good route. Watch this. It's going to be a post. Plant, now he's open right here. He catches the ball, makes a great cut underneath. He doesn't miss, he has a broken tackle. Now he picks up a couple blocks. Now you gotta protect that ball. You see now he's almost gets hit from the backside and pulls that ball loose. But what a play by Grant Hurd. Quentin Reese ran him down, saved a touchdown. Well, the momentum is back on the other side of the field now. The Rebels have a chance to take the lead. McAllister trying to get in the outside, can't do it. Spikes runs him down to the backfield. Boy, did Spikes come through that line in a hurry? Look at the intensity in those eyes. Yeah, watch this. You're going to see him come right through here. Bang, he's going to get him in a hurry. Boom, you see him having to change right there. There's Spikes coming along the line. He's three yards in the backfield. That'll slow down your running game. 18 straight starts for Takeo Spikes at linebacker. Seven tackles today. Watch French in this situation. He's the big man. Interesting, we're down. The, the clock is at zero, and we have started to play. What's going on? I think Ole Miss wants to run the clock out and end the third quarter. Yeah, that's what they did. And they haven't reset the play clock. They're yeah. going to let it run out. Exactly right. Three quarters now in the books. Auburn has the lead, 10 to 6. But the Rebels are on the drive. Auburn leading it. Takeo Spikes trying to make a defensive stand. Fourth quarter from Auburn coming up in just a moment. Rebel fans trying to urge their team to grab the lead back. Auburn leads it 10 to 6, but the Rebels are on the move. Dave, this has been a courageous Ole Miss effort today. Oh, I think it's just, I think it's just been a stellar performance by Ole Miss. I just think it's uh, it's probably one of their shining moments because this is an outstanding Auburn football team, deep in talent at almost every position. And Ole Miss, Miss comes in here, 20 point or more underdog. And they're doing what they're doing today, Bob. Now the challenge is the Auburn defense. It's been something they've been talking about all year long, trying to get this defense to make big plays and big stops. And the challenge is right now is Ole Miss driving on the Tigers again. Patrick fires. Can't hit his wide receiver, Grant Hurd. And Patrick's knocked down. Oh, I think Spikes just crushed Patrick. I think he just crushed him. Watch 55. You see him right there? Here he comes. You hear those footsteps. Woo! Bam! Hello, Mr. Quarterback. No time to recock there. Ouch, that hurt. He'll feel that one till about Wednesday, oh, won't he? Boy. Spikes is obviously a big time player. Third down, 11. Pat 
Patricks. They're blitzing. Oh, almost picked off. Oh. Auburn read it, and again, Patricks gets drilled. Brad Ware almost came up with the deflection and the interception, and Auburn's defense holds. Unbelievable pressure on Patridge. He's standing back in a shotgun. Watch, he's going to get just leveled here. Pow, bam, smash. Look at the helmet come off. One of the players has his helmet, just kind of throws his helmet down. Jimmy Brumbaugh and Ryan Taylor are the guys that got to him. And watch this right here. Look at this. Bang, that's touchdown all the way. That was intended for Hurd. And Ware just steps in front of it. Oh, boy, he was good. He had about an 80-yard run. Steve Lindsay again, this time from 46 yards. And it is good. Steve Lindsay, his third field goal of the day, officially 45 yards. Well, we said keep scrapping and keep kicking. And I mean to tell you, it's been a kicking uh, circus today. It's been incredible for Lindsay. They punted well. He's had a 52, what, a 52, 23, and a 45-yard field goal. That is outstanding. He's the, he's the difference in the football game. Again, watch this ball. Good snap, good hold, spin the laces. You see him coming forward. And look at the trajectory of that ball. High, right off his toe, just gets right inside the bar. And they caught it again in the stands. You know, there's some old coaches in this league, General Nealon, Shook Jordan, that said, you got to win with the kicking game, and Ole Miss is staying in this game with the kicking game. There's the stats of the third quarter, and you see really pretty even, Dave. Yeah, and especially time of possession. That's the big one that jumps out at you, is that Ole Miss has had their share of the football. They haven't done a whole lot, but they've driven the ball, they've scrapped for first downs, they've hung in there, and they've got a time of possession almost equal to Auburn. Auburn is the offensive machine. I mean, we're talking about a lot of talent. For Tommy Tuberville, it's a shining moment for his Ole Miss team. Well, his defense, Tuberville's, will be tested here. Can they stop Auburn again? Last time the Tigers had it, they took it down the field for a touchdown to go ahead. Auburn still has the lead as Lindsey gets set to kick it off again. Markeith Cooper standing back on the goal line for Auburn. going to squip through the end zone. Another good kick for Lindsey. Auburn will have the ball at its own 20. Let's go downstairs to Warren Pepper. Bob, Terry Bowden has taken a page from his dad's book in that every season he comes up with a slogan for that team to kind of embrace. This year it's called WIN, but it's an acronym for whatever is necessary. It would appear that today defense is definitely going to be necessary in order to get out of here with this one. They lead right now 10-9 inside 14 and a half minutes. Dave, I'm sure Auburn would like to hang on to the ball for a while oh, they now. they sure would. They'd love to drive the ball, use the control clock, take a little bit of the emotion out of Ole Miss. Also wear down those big men in the middle. There's Ole Miss still going with that first team unit. Everybody's still exactly the same and they're still coming off hard. Craig, got time, finds Cooper underneath. Cooper picks up about six on the play. Omega's Spearman comes up to make the stop. And, Bob, when you, when you do a defensive game plan, you try to take things away from the other team's offense. And Ole Miss has taken away the deep game. Tommy Tuberville has, has got a defensive plan that's taking away the deep patterns, the long outs, the ones to Karsten, again, the ones to Goodson. They've, they've held everything has been 12, 15 yards or under, and that's the short passing game. Number! drops it. Goodson had it. Timothy Strickland comes over at the last second. Might have got a hand on it. I think Strickland, I think he dove out and might have just touched the football. Left ear screen. Watch him. Number three. When he comes in, right here. See if he doesn't get his hand out. Right there. Oh, man, he does. Well, that is a great picture from our crew just to show what happened on that play. Just got a fingertip on that ball to deflect it. That's the old tip drill, though. Receivers Boy. are still supposed to catch those. But Strickland, beaten on the play, covered up and made a great recovery to get just a fingertip on it. Third down and five. Auburn has not been very good except on the first drive in third down conversions. Swing pass to Beasley. He's got a first down. Brock Kreitz comes over. And Malika Griffin. 
Did you see what Beasley did on that little swing pass out of the backfield? What he did is he knew exactly how far he had to go. He knew that he had to get past the 30-yard line. When he caught that football, he just flat out just dove. He saw the line, put his head down, and said, I'm going to run right through you. I'm not going to get stuck up. I'm not going to get tipped to the side. I'm going right through you. Tigers this time come with three wide receivers to this near side. Clifton Robinson into the game. Right now, 15, 24 for 176, and movement up front. Mitch Baker pointing over at Auburn, saying they drew me off. Yeah, I think it might have been Kendall Simmons who kind of flipped, flinched a little bit. With He's a left guard, and I think what happened is I think he flinched just a little bit. They're in the up stance. Now, is it, did he flinch on the defense, or did he flinch on his own? That's the discussion. And Dick Burleson will tell us. All right, Dick, tell us what happened. We have a dead ball foul. Offside by the defense. Defense was in the neutral zone threatening an offensive player. Right there. See the, now you see the right there, you see the flinch by 73. And you see and you see right there, Damian emphasizing. Did you see the flinch right there by 73? That's Simmons, but he flinched after the defensive player entered the neutral zone. You're allowed to do that to protect yourself. Mitch Baker is the one drawn offside. Baker, of course, is getting more and more snaps. A transfer from Tennessee. He's a sophomore out of Germantown, Tennessee. Number 90, right there in the middle. Going after Craig again. Craig, bust containment. Baker gets a hand on him. Finally, he's dropped by Walker Jones. Good hustle by Mitch Baker trying to run him down, but Damian Craig, very elusive. Gets the first down, and that's how dangerous Craig is. Well, did you see what happened on the tail end of this play? You're going to see Craig right here. The pocket breakdown, flushed out. He steps up and gets the first down. But when he got up, he walked over to Karsten Bailey, and, and he kind of he gave him the go deep, go deep sign. You see, when as soon as he gets up, he starts pointing at Karsten Bailey. See, going deep, go deep. When I get in trouble, go deep. I'll hit you with it. So the Tigers now crunching out some first downs, nursing a one-point lead as we tick down to 12 and a half minutes in the fourth quarter. Craig underneath again, this time good to Robinson. Robinson has slumped to the turf on a good tackle that time by Nate Wayne, the linebacker who gets out in coverage. Not a first down, it's into Ole Miss territory at the 49. Well, what they're doing again is they're taking away those deep routes, so they're giving them that eight to 10 yards underneath passes. You see, what they're trying to do is they're trying to play just an underneath zone, and as soon as he catches it, come up, try to stop him, see if he can force a fumble. But uh, this game has gone a long time without a turnover. No turnovers, no fumbles, no interceptions. A couple close calls, but a very, very clean game. Damian Craig has hit six of his last seven passes. And now the handoff to Cooper. Can't get back to the line of scrimmage as Cooper is knocked down. A loss of one. Brock Kreitz stayed home and made the play. And now maybe maybe Beasley time coming out of that backfield on that little swing. Or look for one of those little crossing patterns at five to six yards. But uh, Ole Miss, they know what they know what the plays are going to be. They chart all the plays. They say this is what he likes on third down and short yardage. They've got him there. They need to come up with a big play here. Third down and five. They've got to stop him here. Keep him out of that four down territory. 11.20 to go, and the clock ticks. Derek Bird just trying to get back and get after Damian Craig. Here they come. Swing pass to Cooper, but a lot of white shirts are there, and they knock him down at the line of scrimmage. Great coverage that time. Timothy Strickland comes up and gets the first hit on Markeith Cooper. And, and what, the Tigers have got a punt it. And what they decide to do is they decide to blitz on him. They came after the quarterback. They came after Damian Craig. They said, go ahead and throw that little swing pass if you want. And look at the emotion of Damian Craig. He's a fireball. He's upset with himself. He takes off his helmet, puts his helmet down, walks away, and just has to cool down a little bit. Quite a different quarterback. I like him, though. I, I enjoyed the time that you spent with him. He's a fireball. Jared Holmes back to punt for Auburn, trying to pin him deep. Brown fumbles it, and Ron is swarmed under, back at the five-yard line. A penalty marker is down. They mark it at the six. Boy, and you don't want this to be a defensive penalty. You don't want them to be a holding call. Probably he's going to go against the receiving team. Fred Beasley down in coverage for Auburn. 
But anytime you get him inside the 10-yard line, you sure don't want it to be a defensive call, something against defense like a face mask or something. I think it's going to go against Ole Miss. That's flipping on the return team. Half the distance to go. First down. Well, that's a short penalty. <laughs> it's only going to be about a yard and a half. But the challenge now is very, very big for the Ole Miss Rebels. They are 96 yards away from the end zone, trailing by one with 10.22 to go. Advance Auto Parts presents the SEC Good Works Team, recognizing the superior community service efforts of league football players. Today's honoree is linebacker Walker Jones from the University of Mississippi. Walker is a mentor for students at Oxford Area Elementary Schools. He also organized and participated in Hoops for Kids, an annual fundraiser for the American Cancer Society. Advance Auto Parts is proud to salute Walker Jones and will contribute $1,000 to the Make-A-Wish Foundation on behalf of the SEC Good Works team. Auburn 10, Ole Miss 9, but the Rebels are backed up and deep in their own territory. So the Rebels now huddled about Tommy Tuberville knowing Davey can't make mistakes here. Well, it's such a, such a critical point in the game with 10 minutes and 20 seconds left. You talked about being 96 yards away from a touchdown, but they just cannot make mistakes. Here's some scores now. NC State leading Clemson. That's in the fourth, 17-16. Michigan shutting out Colorado. Now the Buffaloes have got a field goal. Penn State early had a tough tussle with Temple, but they're rolling now and oh. look at this one at halftime. Wow. Central Florida is leading Nebraska 17-14. Remember, everybody was saying, well, what's wrong with South Carolina? Well, they yeah. struggled against Central Florida last week. Central Florida's a pretty good football team. I look at the paper, those experts, and I think they had that about a 40-point favorite. Right. <laughs> right, Central Florida playing them off their feet right now. Stuart Patrick at his own four-yard line. Rebels trying just to get some room to work. McAllister puts his head down and gets across the five. Good hard football. You got to drive it out one time, see if he can break it. Now, second down, about six or seven to go. Good pass situation. Check it's, that. That was Canyon on the carry, yeah. not McAllister. Well, it's, it's a good situation right now for Patrick to kind of do that fake action into the line, a little play action, come back, look, maybe look for Rufus French, look for that big tight end, but find somebody open to get the first down. Awfully tough to run against this Auburn defense down here. Ole Miss, substitution problems, and the clock is to 10. The Rebels have got to hurry. They're going to have to call timeout. And now they got to yeah. take a timeout. Had the wrong alignment in for what they had called, so Patrick now has to take a timeout. Now each team only has one timeout remaining. 9.44 to go. The Rebels trying to come out from the shadow of their own goal line. Auburn leads Ole Miss 10-9. Under 10 minutes to go in the game at Auburn. These teams have met twice in bowl games. One of those, the 71 Gator Bowl. Auburn's Pat Sullivan versus Archie Manning of the Ole Miss Rebels. Manning playing with a cast on his left arm. And of course, Sullivan got the Tigers out to a 21 to nothing lead in the second. But then Archie Manning rallied the Rebels down 21-14 at halftime. Manning made several big runs, but Auburn too much beating Ole Miss 35 to 28. There were the comparisons of the two and that terrific game back in the 71 Gator Bowl. They also played each other in the 65 Liberty Bowl at Ole Miss and Auburn. Ole Miss won that game 13-7. Right now, Ole Miss trailing in this one, 10-9 to, to Auburn. Second down. Six yards to go. Patrick, safety! Brian Taylor catches Patrick in the end zone, and Auburn scores two. They snuffed out the bootleg, and Ryan Taylor able to drill Patrick before he could get rid of it. Well, it's called backside containment. When all the flow goes away from you, the outside wide receiver has got backside containment, and that's Ryan Taylor, number six. And what he did was perfect. He did his job. Exactly what he's supposed to do. He's up here, he comes upfield, and he's supposed to keep that backside containment. Bam! There he comes. Right in there, he plays his play. Everything goes away. See, everything's going this way here, and you'll see Taylor just pop right into your screen. Right there. 
Boy, that's just heads up play. And boy, if you're a coach, you love that because everything tells you the play's going away, but you got one assignment, backside containment. The result, two points. So Bill Oliver's defense comes up with a big play. They stop the Rebels, get the safety. Now they'll get the ball back on the free kick. It's bad to give up two points, but the Rebels, it's still a one-possession game. Well, you know, I, I thought about that, and, and a safety is really an important thing. Don't get me wrong. But if they hadn't made the first down, they were going to punt from their own end zone. So now they punt out at the 20-yard line. They got a little bit more of a chance to maybe hold them. It's not all that bad because, as you said, it's a one-possession game. You see the points off the turnovers last season and then this season. Reagan King is going to boot it for the Rebels. And deep is Markeith Cooper and also Clifton Robinson. They stand back around their own 20. So Auburn, you would expect we get good field position. Ole Miss is going to punt the ball instead of putting it on the ground and kicking it. 9.39 to go in the game. High, lazy, wobbly kick. Cooper at his 33. Cooper gets a block from Robinson. Cooper trying to get to the corner, can't do it, but he does get to the 48. Great field position for the Tigers. Well, Bob, you mentioned the fact that he punted instead of kicked off. You have a choice. You can kick off or you can punt. They elected to punt because they get more of a hang time. But again, you said a lazy punt. It didn't have a whole lot of hang time. That was not a great punt. So consequently, they didn't get the coverage down there. Damian Craig, every game moves up a little bit on the passing chart. He's now sixth, trailing Jeff Berger, who Warren Pepper talked to at halftime, back here with the 87 SEC Championship team. Tigers, a three-point lead. They would love to run this clock out. Burge is chasing Craig. He dumps it off, and it's dropped. The pass a little bit behind the intended receiver, Fred Beasley. But again, Burgess gets good pressure. I tell you what, Burgess has played a terrific football game. Well, they all have. I'm, I'm telling you right now, Ole Miss, their front line and their defensive secondary has just played a marvelous football game. They've been going all, all game. They're tired. They all got their hands on their hips. I'm looking at Burgess, 56. He's got his hands on his hips, taking those big, deep breaths. And he just turns around, claps his hands, says, give me one more shot. Let's go get him. Let's go get him is what the Rebels have been saying. They have not made many substitutions in the linebacking crew or in the secondary. They played five defensive backs pretty much the whole way. Beasley jammed up in the middle, gets a couple. Into Ole Miss territory at the 48. Robert Gates again makes the stop for the Rebels. Gates a junior out of Decatur, Georgia, 6'2", 236. When you come up to big plays, and I know we said this a bunch today, but uh, another big play. Third down, there's the signal in for the play. That's what they're going to call, but a big play for both sides. 8.50 to go, and the clock still moves. Six of 13 on third down possessions, conversions for Auburn in this game. Craig's got plenty of time. Fires down the middle for Goodson, and Goodson's got it at the two-yard line. Goodson splits the Ole Miss defenders and now a penalty flag in the end zone. But a big play, Damian Craig to Tyrone Goodson for 47 yards. I hate to think he taunted. You know, he walked away from the play and look at Terry Bowden. If he taunted, that's a 15-yard penalty from the spot. Boy, and Terry Bowden is not going to like that. Goodson with a marvelous catch down the middle. Just marvelous catch down the middle. Fifth catch of the day. Well, let's hear what the call is. We have a completed catch. And then we have a dead ball personal foul against the offensive team. Will be first and ten. I believe it's the taunting. I believe that's what it is. I think it's going to be a taunting. Look at Goodson. Right down the seam. The safety comes over. I think it's Hurd comes over trying to help. And look at this. Just a tremendous concentration. Looking the ball in. He gets bumped. Great concentration. Comes down on the one-yard line. Rolls into the end zone. But there. You see the tail end of the play? That taunt. I believe that's what they called. I think you're right, Dave. Oh, you, that, you just you hate to see that. Because, and you'll see Damian Craig's reaction. 
When he saw the flag, he ran up there saying, what in the world's that for? Good concentration, though, yeah. by Goodson as Strickland did hit him in the back as the ball was coming. But he holds on, and Auburn now a first and ten. And off in the middle. Rusty Williams stopped by again by Gates. Clock down to eight minutes to go. Auburn leads it 12 to nine. And you start to think about what ifs, what, what will happen. If Auburn is held to a field goal here, they go up 15 to nine. They really need a touchdown to put this game, to ice this game a little bit, take a little bit of pressure off them. And of course, the Ole Miss defense, they would love to get a turnover right here. Yeah, turnover or at least hold them to a field goal. They hold them to a field goal, they're six points down. Second down and nine for the Tigers. Boy, Ole Miss creeping up. Craig looking, stop and go, and Gibson, touchdown! Tyrone Gibson faked the out, went up, and Craig hit him. Goodson on this play, great again, good concentration. We talked about sight adjustment. Did you see that last little look that Damian Craig made back over to Goodson? When Goodson caught the ball, he took off from the end zone, looked like he poured hot water on his back, screamed all the way back to his bench, and there was no taunting on that one. Damian Craig has led Auburn to two second half touchdowns and now a more comfortable 10 point lead over Ole Miss. Auburn now leads it by 10, 19 to 9 after the terrific touchdown drive capped off the scoring strike from Damian Craig to Tyrone Goodson. And Bob, we talked about that side adjustment. You could see it on that play. We may get a chance after the kick to look at that side adjustment, but it was a tremendous example of a quarterback and a wide receiver working together. Scoring drive, five plays, 51 yards, and Goodson the 16-yard touchdown reception. And it's a big play for Auburn and a big drive. Eighth career TD for Goodson, and Holmes now kicks it through the end zone. Auburn forces him back to the 20. Now watch the eyes of Damian Craig. He looks out here. There's the call. Now watch the little catch in his eyes as he looks back out at Goodson right there. You see him look right there? That's it. Now he sees he's wide open. Now he goes through the snap count, looks back across to get that, and bang, he hits him with a touchdown pass. That's what those coaches talked about with sight adjustment. Great example of the eyes. Nice touch that time on the pass, Damian Craig to Goodson. Goodson today, six catches, 137 and a touchdown, four for 100 in the second half and the touchdown and Damian Craig today 19 of 29 245 yards and the touchdown now the Rebels really up against it they have to score on this drive they need some control they need some good things to and happen and the clock runs out on them. the play clock runs down and so the Rebels will be backed up with 725 to go boy and you hate that after I mean five that's five foolish yards dead ball foul the lay of game, offense, five yard penalty, first down. So not a good start. Tommy Tuberville's team now goes to first and 15. Seven penalties on the day for Ole Miss. This is the 12th time that Auburn and Ole Miss have opened the SEC season. And Auburn leads the series 10 to 1. And Ole Miss is going to pull off some big miracles if they're going to win for the first time ever at Auburn. Patrick's knocked down again. A blitz that time. And Crowder, the linebacker. Terrence Crowder comes up and makes the stop. Boy, it's just pocket collapsing in this situation. He's in a shotgun. He's taking a little bit extra time. You see 37 right in the middle. Late minute blitz right there. Boom. He's got nobody to cover. He was looking to pick up, stayed, hesitated on the line. And last minute just blitzed in, brought down the quarterback. Can't take that much time. You got to line it up quick. I would look for him to go to that outside, maybe to check out there with uh, Hurd or someone like that. Go deep, throw long, see if you can get that one-on-one -on -one break. Rebels are going the wrong way on this possession. The draw play, McAllister. Flag down right in the middle of the line as McAllister gets out to the 15. Crowder again comes in, makes another play, but that's not in a good spot for Ole Miss. No, play. backside of the play. Almost always a 
It's one of those offensive linemen getting a little bit tired. Yep, holding against Ole Miss. It's going to back them up even farther. Second penalty in this possession against the Rebels. So things are kind of falling apart for Tommy Tuberville. Holding against the offense. Penalty is declined. Third down. But Dave, you know, we've been mentioning the kicking game, the kicking game, and Auburn kept backing Ole Miss up, backing them up. They got them in bad yep. positions, get the safety, and that turns the whole game around. Yeah, it surely does. It did because it gave them two possessions quickly. Penalty's really not a huge factor in this football game, not crucial ones, but no turnovers. That's been the story of this football game. Patrick's looking for somebody to pop free. Nobody does, and they run him out of bounds. Oh, they tackle him out of bounds. He can't do that. Jeff Dunlap got him out of bounds. Yeah, you can't do that. Might even be a face mask, but uh, that was clearly outside the the white uh, perimeter might be a double foul and he's just a little bit anxious to get out there and get us get a snap get a chance Dunlap the freshman they have a dead Pearson, ball Georgia. foul grabbing the face mask 15 yard penalty dead ball foul automatic first down now that's the that's the severe penalty watch he uses it see the hand goes on it and he uses it to tackle he doesn't let go keeps on holding on now he lets go but a little bit too late uses it to make the tackle that's the big penalty i tell you what stewart patridge has been beat up today a little bit oh, he keeps coming back for more yes he does terry bowden's team has made a couple of mistakes but so far they really haven't crossed him severely let's see about this one patridge knocked down again Ryan Taylor. And Patrick's got hit right when it hurts. As you're into the as you're into the uh, as you're into the motion of pit uh, throwing the football, all of a sudden you just get crushed. Carson just came in. Now they pick up spikes that time, 55, and show him away. But look at Carson from the backside. And I'll tell you now, now if you're a defensive lineman, it's just great fun. Because now it's just lay back your ears and flat out come after him. Carson got him low, Taylor got him high, and Patrick's knocked down again. Well, he's got to go to his wide outs in the one-on-one -on -one situation and throw it up early and hope for something. Second down. Patrick's falling back, throws it. It's up for grabs, and it's intercepted. Brad Ware goes up and gets it. The first turnover of the day, and it goes to the Auburn Tigers. I almost got the feeling that was a frustration pass by by Patrick. He just felt like he had to go to one of his wide receivers eventually, but he throws into coverage and allows the uh, free safety to come over there. And the free safety is where number 27. And watch how high he goes. The peak of the pass, high up in the ball, helps out. Great concentration to look that football in. Tremendous interception by Ware. Sophomore out of Powder Springs, Georgia, his fifth career interception. And Ware gives the ball back to the Tigers at midfield with six minutes to go. Auburn, a team that led the SEC in rushing two years ago, would like to crank it up right now with Rusty Williams and Walker Jones comes up to make the stop. I almost get the feeling that Terry Bowden would just like to say, let's just hold on to the ball, let's run it a little bit, let the clock go down, let's be happy about this uh, this lead that we have, just kind of grind it a little bit. Don't need any more points. Just kind of get away from one. A lot of uh, a lot of talk about uh, Auburn possibly looking ahead to next week. They've got uh, some tough teams on their schedule coming up. Williams again to the 43-yard line. So Auburn will have it third down and sure. Let's go down to Warren. Bob, I, in talking with uh, Coach Tubble before the game, he said, you know, that uh, with probation, they just don't have the numbers yet to play as uh, with some of the higher echelon teams within the conference. He says he believes it takes 50 to 55 players to play at this level week to week. He says right now they've got about 40, and for a long, long time today, those 40 were pretty good. See they all the underclassmen, though, on the two deep, and it's tough to win in this conference unless you've got some veterans that have been through the wars before and you get to this some points in some of these games Dave and you've got to learn how to win and that's a good move by Rusty Williams to get the first down but you've got to learn how to win you got to learn in the fourth quarter when you're in certain situations 
to make make the plays to get to the victory. Yeah, you've got to. Every game is decided by four or five big plays. You look at the big plays in this one. The safety was huge. Uh, the missed opportunities, couple missed opportunities by Ole Miss early the in the football Bailey game. The yeah, middle. exactly. The one to Bailey. They they had they had several plays where they could have won this football game, but every game is decided by four or five plays that you can point at. 4:22 to go. The clock runs. Auburn with the first down. That's Fred Beasley powers ahead. And give the Auburn line some credit. This second half, Victor Bailey, uh, Victor Riley, and Demarcus Curry, T.J. Dunnigan, T.J. Mears, and Jeno James have been able to finally take the game over. See the remaining games. Auburn plays at LSU and then Central Florida. Boy, they're popping up on everybody's schedule. <laughs> Two strong powerhouses, huh? <laughs> yeah, Central Florida. We'll try and get an update on that Nebraska wow. game, but they That's were leading at halftime. Now at 17-17, Central Florida and Nebraska in the third quarter. Pitch back. Pennington on the corner. Good open field tackle that time by Gary Thigpen. 325 to go in counting. But sometimes you don't realize what a big oasis you're in when you're a cornerback. That time Thigpen had inside and outside and he had a one-on-one. -on -one. He just did a marvelous job bringing him down. Just a good stick in there, bring him down for about a two, three yard gain. Could have been a lot longer. Rebels, of course, play Vanderbilt their next game in a couple of weeks. Of course, they'll be back in Oxford where they're adding on to their stadium and things are moving for the Rebels. Tommy Tuberville says this year and next year will be tough, but in two years he thinks he'll be able to be a contender in the SEC West. Boy, this is just this is just strength football right now. Auburn coming in with two tight ends. You look at those big linemen getting down, and they got about 250 pounds on their fingertips. There's no fooling them right now. It's just drive blocking them, drive them off the line. See if you can just who's going to win. Fourth down for Auburn, and it appears the Tigers are going to go for it on yeah. a fourth and three. Well, you don't kick a field goal now because you make this first down and you run the clock out. And they have enough confidence in their offensive line. They feel that they can they can do it. They may wait. They, well, I don't know what they're waiting for now. I see Damian Craig coming over to the sideline. They're going to call a timeout when they yeah. roll it down to three, two, one. Timeout. Timeout for Auburn. That's their last one of the game. So Damian Craig and Terry Bowden top strategy. What a big weekend it was last week for the Bowden family. All three of them won. Terry, Tommy, Bobby. 2-5 to go here. Auburn that close to a victory. Today's Bell South SEC Game of the Week was brought to you by Bell South. Bell South is proud to be the official telecommunications partner of the SEC. By Sonic, where we invite you to drive in for a change. And by Morgan Keegan, the South's premier investment firm. Tiger, the Auburn mascot, enjoying the proceedings here today on the loveliest village on the plain. 19-9, Auburn leading Ole Miss. Bob Kessling, Dave Rowe, Warren Pepper with you today. Damian Craig has led this second half comeback, and that's what you expect from a veteran floor. You sure do. You expect leadership, and there's the leader of this Auburn team. Fourth down and three. Tiger's going to go. Oh, he's going to call an audible. Remember, no timeouts. Craig going to keep it himself. Trying to get to the corner. Can't do it. Play well, still alive. Now they knock him down. So Craig tries to do him himself, but an Ole Miss snuffs it out, and the Rebels get the ball back, and they've still got life. Well, we talked about backside containment by Auburn. That time it was backside containment by Ole Miss. They played it well. They played a strung it out. The play is designed. It's a fake right here. Now it's naked. You come out by yourself, but look at this. They play it well. You see everybody running out there. They turn them back in, looking for help. They got a lot of white shirts. It must be eight, nine white shirts in that picture to take him down. Andre Harrison is the guy credited with the tackle. So that gamble for Auburn doesn't work. Rebels again need points in a hurry. And Romero Miller now into the game. They run him down from the backside. Guess who? Ryan Taylor. Boy, he's made a bunch of big plays second half. Well, Bob, you mentioned that he was the starting free safety last year and moved up to a backer spot. 
He's about 230 pounds, so he's maybe a little bit light for that outside backer, but he's got great speed, good savvy of the game, and he's one of those players that said, hey, coach, I just want to help this team. Where can I play? He intercepted a pass last week against Virginia, ran it back for a touchdown, first play of the second half. So he's made big plays back-to-back -back weeks. Merrill Miller throws short. Try to get it out to Andre Roan. And Jimmy Brumberg trying to put pressure on the Ole Miss quarterback. Be sure to visit the official internet side of the Southeastern Conference for up-to-date stats, game previews, coaches' comments, and much, much more. The SEC online at secsports.com. Tyron Goodson, the touchdown catch here in the second half. Third and 17. Open Auburn open up the lead. 119 to go. The Rebels need a bunch. 17 here. Fly. That one's almost intercepted. Again, Brad Weir gets back there along with Antoine Nolan. Well, Bob, you know, we've talked a lot about this old Miss offense, and uh, of course the loss of Corey Peterson really hurt them. The yeah. starter, starter coming into this football game, had a good week last week, six, seven catches, and you take that element out, and uh, he's got a bruised kidney, he's not going to be able to play. That's a big factor when you, when you take out that part of your offense. Reagan King comes back into the game. Auburn not convinced he's going to punt it yet. They haven't dropped anybody back. I think he just punted this situation. Going to get a heck of a roll. And it'll be dropped dead at the 20-yard line. That's where Auburn will take over. But just one minute exactly to go. Reagan King gets 53 yards for the kick. So the Tigers set to go to 2-0 on the season and 1-0 in the Southeastern Conference. No miss to drop to 2-1, 0-1 in the SEC. Clemson now has fought back. They have won against NC State. 19-17, big win for Tommy West and the Tigers. Fourth, Michigan leads Colorado 27-3. Uh, Penn State rolling over Temple now 35-10. Look at that. Nebraska and Central Florida tied in the third still. I bet there are not many people can even name where Central Florida is. Of course, it's in Orlando. None of our spotters knew, and stats people didn't know, but I knew. Damian Craig going <laughs> to take a knee. They're just going to run the clock out. I think it's in, in, in Orlando, isn't it? You're the one that's on the... <laughs> Wait a minute. You're the one walking the plank here. Yeah, <laughs> and y'all sawed it off. Thanks a lot, buddy. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's in Orlando. I hope it's in you'll Orlando. Get, you, if it's not, you'll get cards <laughs> and letters this week. Well, you know, it's one of those 1AA teams that moved up to Division I this year. And uh, they're cannon fodder for a lot of people. I, I spoke one day at a, at a football boosters club, and their coach came and said, we're going to be all right in a couple of years. we got a lot of good players, and uh, I'm sure Tommy Tuberville feels the same way, saying, hey, we got a lot of young players. He's let us get a couple of years, and they know it at Ole Miss. They know that uh, their program is a couple of years away from getting those numbers up where they can play competitive for a full game. Auburn didn't have to snap it again. The clock will run out, but Ole Miss has called a timeout. They got one left. Might as well use it. So Tommy Tuberville burns the last timeout the Rebels have. And uh, now with 14 seconds to go, Auburn, now the fans have a chance to savor it, and you expect the Auburn fans to head downtown after the game to Toomer's Corner. They say former Auburn coach John Heisman used to come in and sip lemonade at Toomer's Drugstore. Still in business in downtown Auburn. Also in the vi village, the Tiger Trail, which honors the university's greatest athletes, coaches, and administrators. And the tradition at Toomer's Corner calls for the rolling of toilet paper in the big tree right across the street. They do it after every Auburn victory and the Tiger fans are probably headed there right now to have eliminated and savor this victory. But it was a tough one for the Tigers. They got some big plays in the second half from Damian Craig, as you might expect. But I think Ole Miss sent a message today that uh, you think you're going to have an easy time against Ole Miss. You're mistaken. This is a well-coached football team. And now the clock winds down. Auburn doesn't have to snap it again. And the Tigers are going to come away with a 10-point victory over the Ole Miss Rebels. Terry Bowden's team starts the SEC season at 1-0, but they had their hands full today against a very game Tommy Tuberville coached Ole Miss Rebel football team. Well played, Dave, on both sides. It certainly was. Almost an error-free game. I, I haven't seen a game in a long time where he got a fumble, very little penalties, no interceptions until that last one, but 
Again, just an outstanding football game by both teams. Auburn takes it 19 to 9 over the Ole Miss Rebels. And we'll be back after a word from your local SEC station. Next Saturday, the Hawks come calling in Tuscaloosa, Arkansas, gets their first taste of the new improved Alabama passing attack and quarterback Freddie Kitchens. At SEC West Battle next Saturday on your Jefferson Pilot Sports Stations, check your local listing for Arkansas and Alabama. Here, Auburn wins against Ole Miss 19-9. Second half comeback by the Tigers as they rally. The safety by Ryan Taylor sets it up. And then again, Damian Craig, the touchdown pass to Tyrone Goodson. Well, Good win for Auburn. Yeah, it really was for me. From what I could see in the football game, it's that man right there, Damian Craig, who just took charge in that second half and just said, I refuse to lose. And the Tigers didn't today. They take it 19-9 for our producer, Rob Reichley, our director, Ken Dennis, and the rest of our Jefferson Pilot sports staff. For Dave Rowe and Warren Pepper, I'm Bob Kessling. So long from Auburn, where the Tigers win it 19-9.